Hello, everyone, and welcome to Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 34. I'm your host, Dominic Rashad Fury, joined this week by Simus. How's it going, Simus? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You did not get enough of me last week with ZK. You're going to have a double dose of Simus. Back to back casting. Hey! All the moose. So yeah. much moose. It's fun. What I used flavor to cast, of moose? I used to cast quite a bit. What, what flavor, you're asking? What flavor of moose? Uh, a sea moose, obviously. You don't know what a sea moose? It's like, kind of like a sea cucumber, but mm. like a sea moose, right? It's so what it tastes quite like, salty, then. Yes, definitely a sea moose. Or an ocean elk, or some other aliases that I've been called before. I'm not those people. Uh, like lake deer. I'm imagining a salted caramel, then. Yeah, okay. I, I like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, lick myself, you know, lick my hand on stream. That'd be kind of weird. Uh, but probably, probably, that's what it tastes like. Give the people what they want. <laughs> a donation stream? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll man. do that later. Anyway, yeah. we have actually a pretty big tournament this week. Nine people popping in. We do. With a couple developers as well. Execute and Jack Attack. Both are developers for the game. And mm -hmm. both of them are currently playing against each other. That is actually going to be our first match. Because, well, why not? Yeah. We'll see how they do. So, uh, Execute, a.k.a. Benny. Tom, uh, Jack Attack. For those of you who have heard of like the core in starcraft right uh definitely an og of that scene as well as the immortal gates of pyre scene um and we actually saw benny play in last weekend's tournament uh so she's starting to sort of dip her feet into the competitive tournament realm which is really exciting yeah she has a very good attitude going into this very much a like just i will do what i can and then see what happens and it'll be a fun time we'll love we'll a we'll have good matches yeah i mean so, absolutely like we're, that's we're not playing for like have. For what it's worth, that there is something on the line other than pride. Um, typically, it's better just to, you know, have a good mindset, even if you lose, whatever. But there's literally nothing on the line here, Dom. It's Break the Game it Weekly. Uh, there's no prize pool, anything like that. We have seen Break the Game Weeklies have broken games. Because by definition, we are trying to break the game, both in terms of strategies and in terms of finding bugs for the developers so really cool to see that positive attitude see more developers playing i do expect we'll probably see some more of that in the future i mean folks like buddy leading the charge i really hope that we can get some more people playing and just kind of hanging out i'm i'm excited to see like the what the immortal picks are going to be right like what they mm -hmm. you know because uh, it's best of three in the winner's side bracket and then loser's bracket is going to be the best of one if we see any runbacks but looking at the bracket itself there are quite a number of names here as far as like some players that haven't been playing in tournaments for a couple of weeks who are well known and very experienced. So it should be a really fun tournament. Yeah, I'm actually, we haven't seen Execute on stream. We have seen Jack Attack on stream. And as far as their own immortal picks go, I apparently forgot to write that down. I'm sorry, I actually forgot to write no, that you, down. No, so I, to... <laughs> I've, I've seen Tom play quite a different amount of picks. Uh, I do think the meta right now for many of the top players is uh, Zakal favored. So anything Ira based. Orzum, I don't know. It's interesting because I was playing quite a couple of games this earlier this week, um, and I know at least one player. I'm not going to say who because I don't want to spoil the surprise. Thinks that Orzum is very powerful, but that doesn't seem to be a mainstay. I we haven't seen a lot of Orzum lately. Ajari has gotten a yeah. massive boost in popularity, but Orzum feels like they've just been kind of there. You occasionally yeah. will see things like Santa's attempt at a can cannon rushing, which works really well, but other than that, it's been. Like, as far as mid-late game Orzum, not that popular. And I don't think they're weak. I just, they just haven't really been played very much. Yeah, it's, think, that, that is literally the, 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 the shared opinion with a couple of the players we have. And one of them's playing in the tournament. So if we get to the match, I will, I will bring it up. Tom, Tom and Benny execute, in this game I expect probably just kind of comfort picks and what they think is strong. Um, in my experience, mm -hmm. Tom has been pretty flexible as a player. Um, I'm not quite sure what Benny favors, to be honest. I, I'm predicting at least one Aru Immortal. That's my prediction for this match. It's a good safe prediction. Also, a very pop. I mean, yeah. So it seemed like Aru was a little bit stronger this patch because the calls were very strong. And then s there was some meta shifts. And that stopped being the case. Like, the call is still seen as decently strong, but not quite as overly busted strong as they had been. Yeah, like, that's... So I, I was testing something the other day, and I learned that three is a call, lose to three Zephyr in a straight of fight, which actually surprised yeah. me. Given like I don't know, like that that my perception of how strong is a call were just based off of all the the break the game tournaments, right? Which <laughs> so a call were super super good. 
Um, and they're still very valuable, and they have a lot of use cases, but they are, you know, that, that pendulum is starting to swing. It is definitely what we've seen. They are, they're tanks. That is that is the point. People did have a bit of success with pushing Zakal as damage dealers. And in an earlier patch, they were much better at dealing damage, but now they are pure tanks. Yeah, And it's yeah. just that did, like, against some of the other basic units, it was really strong, but yeah, Zephyrs can deal with it. Aru, that was the funny thing, because... With a bit of upgrades, actually, Mast Hunters were not doing too badly. Yeah, I mean, you've got the offering upgrade, uh, their ability, basically, which will do some damage to them and then make them have higher attack speed. And you can also get an additional upgrade for the bonus movement speed. Uh, and attack speed and movement speed are very strong stats, especially for units like the Mast Hunter, who you can just build so many of. Yeah, and then you have the offering on top of that, and it's just, you just kind of go ham. Apologies, Dominic. If you hear any crashing in the background, I have a young kitten who is currently running around the house. Oh. <laughs> Which I, yeah, I believe you know that. you know what that life is like, right? I think you. I you actually know, like... don't. I got my cat when he was ten. Oh wow. Okay, so I I have two cats now. Uh, Will is my older cat, and Zuko. I got Will as a four year old, give or take, mm -hmm. right? So he he was definitely out of the kitten phase. Um, and then when I moved here recently, one of my neighbors had a litter, and they were really desperately trying to get rid of them. So I, I adopted Zuko as like. A three, four month old. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of energy. Uh, the oh, yeah. stories are true. That's why they generally recommend when you have a kitten to have two kittens. Yeah, I mean having having friends for your for your pets is pretty important. Letting them play with each other and just kind of yeah. I mean I can't, but I'm it, curious. It's a good idea. Uh, do we have a status on the match? We are getting into. Well, we we might. We don't. We will. When we actually get into the match, we'll switch over. Okay. Um, I mean, we're going to probably be heading into Jack Attack versus Execute very soon. I mean, there's so many interesting matches going on. Scroll versus Flicky is probably going to be really good. Hydraulics versus Shadow Murloc really good, too. Even YJ Zhou versus Not a Voyeur, because all these players, like, matches two and three on Challenge, uh, for everyone watching, looking at the bracket right now, those matches are featuring players that have played more recently and then players who haven't played in a while. Sort of like comebacks, right? Uh, and then the match four is two players that are, are, are both on kind of their own respective grind and have been much more active recently. Um, of course, match five, the, the winner of Jack Attack vs. Execute, going to play Santa Claus. Santa Claus, uh, definitely the favorite in this tournament is Santa. As as is normally the case, yeah. yeah they're usually favorite pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I mean just in terms of uh, both 1v1 domination and 2v2, uh, Santa Claus is definitely one of the top players, unless we see folks like, you know, Hydra, maybe Magical playing, uh, I mean, back in the day, Euthermal. I, I have seen uh, Santa, excuse me, lose to folks like Hydraulics in the past, like that level of player, right, Drago, um, have taken games mm -hmm. off them, but it definitely has been a while. Santa's been pretty consistent in terms of participation. And that's the thing, is that it's been, it's the build-up, right? The fact that Santa has been gradually improving and right. consistently doing well. Yeah, like, like it is absolutely a thing that these returning players can come back and be very successful. And the game, independent of patches of sometimes, moves on, right? And players improve. Yep. Uh, and Santa is definitely exactly. someone who's passionate about that improvement process. Uh, so you should definitely expect that. They're also just really funny because they like to just experiment with random things, usually based on what oh, a yeah. book they've recently read. <laughs> really? Uh, based off the book? Oh, yeah. Tell me about no, that. No, no, that's why they're like several weeks ago they're playing incubators because they had just read the book, this book is full of spiders. And then Oh my god, you're right. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah, that was that literally was, based off the book. Yeah, which is not actually in a book about spiders. It, it's a cosmic horror story that that I, I mean maybe has spiders in it, but that wasn't Quite exactly what I expected, but turns out, would, yeah. Well, the question, would you recommend it? I don't know. I haven't read it. I okay, just read about enough, it. All right. Well, but it's also, I wouldn't recommend it until you read the book, because it's a second in a series. Okay, okay. So. so I'd look it up and see what the first book is, and then read that, if you wanted to read it. Immortal Gates of Fire book club, folks. Uh, if you if yep. you like that idea, post it in the chat, post it in the Discord. Uh, otherwise, no. ladies and gentlemen, we are into game one. And we have... To our players, Mala and Zul. There we so go. There we go. And question answered. The first first set of immortals here: Mala for Jack Attack and Zul for Execute. So, um, for anyone watching the VOD, uh, 
two minutes ago when I said I wasn't sure what Benny was going to play, I totally, totally forgot a very important note, Dominic. And that note is that Benny actually is one of the principal concept designers from the art side on Zol. So ah. kind of could have expected that, putting one and one together. <laughs> that is um, that is a piece of information I had forgotten. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's uh, a good so piece of information. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Benny, that I totally forgot Zol is your gal. Um, and then Yitlander in, in the chat as well, reminding us, Yitlander is another one of those players that, that's, you know, not in today's tournament, but very, very effective. Um, but yeah, we'll see how effective Execute is as a pilot of Zol, because drawing Zol is one thing, but playing her, a bit of a different ballgame. She is a bit of a tricky immortal to play, and Execute, going for a bit more of an economic approach, Jack Attack is... Sheesh, two, three altars. I think going three altars to call. I, I don't know. That's starting to. Ironically, they don't have any military up. They don't yeah. have any expansions up yet, and they have three altars in a neurosite. That looks like three altars to call to me. That. That's kind of funny. I mean, we talked about just what are we gonna see, and I actually think that if you play into that sort of early to mid, like, it, it's it's not an early game strategy because it takes a couple of minutes of precious time. There is an opportunity for execute who who we're gonna call Benny sometimes. Uh, to, to be aggressive, right? Um, that being said, though, Dom, I don't actually think Benny is going to be that aggressive because this is a potentially an unfamiliar environment. She hasn't played as much uh, in these tournaments as we've seen Tom, who, who just in general has more of that experience. And um, It's going to come down to whether or not she does because, honestly, Execute's going to need it. She, she is long, If she's able to take enough pyre to get Zol, that's reasonably good. She gets mm. an army up to deal with the with the call because having Zol is going to help out because Zol splash damage. So execute needs to be able to maintain some map control. That's the biggest thing Jack Attack is giving her right now. Is mm -hmm. Jack Attack's hanging out at home? Execute yeah. is on the map, grabbing pyre. So we do see her get the pyre, but at a bit of a cost. She lost some of the bone stalkers there. Um, I do think four bone stalkers can take a pyre camp, like we saw with less casualties, uh, but it is kind of a tricky thing because you have to be able to micro your bone stalkers while also continuing your economy back at home. It's kind of what we talked about, Zol, Zol as a individual immortal, right? Pretty hard to mm -hmm. play. And then also her units, high risk, but also high reward. However, if the risk is too much, you're gonna be in a bad spot. That, yeah, that's, that's definitely a practice thing, but I imagine Execute got there with time. More important to whether or not she's able to hold off Jack Attack's attack, though, and that's yeah. that's where it's going to be a bit of an issue, having lost those Bone Stalkers earlier. Yeah, I mean, it's in his name, right? Jack Attack. If you want to beat and him... they're about to. you got to be able to push him back. Uh-oh. Ah, run away! That? Okay, Execute is able to get away? She is... Okay, there's a call at the very least... Holding them off. Now the question remains, what next? There's hunting grounds that's gotten set up. There's some Ikor coming up. Unfortunately, Execute only has the one... Uh-oh. The one production structure, so she can't really get that big of an army. Oh, looking to build uh, Erevor into Omnivore, but don't think it's going to be enough to defend here. And now this base in big trouble. The poor, poor symbiote just eviscerated... Oh man, this is a very aggressive early push. It took Tom a couple of minutes to get there, but now at the four and a half minute mark, Benny is in big trouble. Yeah, that, that 48 supplies, the call timing push is killer when you go for fast expand. Yep, that is Especially kind as of the classic. Benny, execute is very clearly going for fast expand into a rapid pivot into a lot of units. And this timing was perfect to get to just hit that. Yeah, and we can see the Red Harvest coming down. So units that die with Mala around are going to turn into Keedle. Doesn't matter which units they are. And that just means that everyone is going to be useful to Tom, aka Jack Attack, in this push here. We see the turret getting taken down. Benny's trying to build some more units, trying to run away here. But this is the last base, folks. It looks like we might see her executed by a Jack Attack. Last well, starts coming in here. <laughs> Those symbiotes trying their absolute hardest. Bone Stalkers will be coming online. Jack attack. If they if they need to get rid of that across that grow part there, but execute they can hold that at bay. Wow. And at least stay alive. No execute. They've run out of they've run out of resources. More bone stalkers coming in, but with nothing else mining, there's not a whole lot actually left. 
Execute desperately trying to hold the line with only five Bone Stalkers. Jack attacks, force though, it's... Only have two more to kill, uh, yeah. and there's the GG. Okay, so in uh, just about five minutes, we see Jack attack able to g take game one there. And honestly, I mean, uh, a lot of that kind of came to the very early moment where Benny went for the pyre camps, right? She was able to get some of these pyre camps, but she did sacrifice a couple of her bone stalkers. And Tom uh, made a very methodical play, right? He went for that 48 pop cap push. He had this calm. He had mass to back him up. He had enough pyre to go for the really powerful building Red Harvest and just sort of snowball the game from there. Yeah, that was... Again, the timing push was just perfect. I, I think if Execute Focus it got a one or two more production structures earlier on, then it would have been possible to build an army. They did have the resources to build production a little bit earlier. That's one of the, the fun things about these kinds of games, right? The amount of decisions multiplied by the amount of inputs that you need to simultaneously or essentially consecutively at a very high pace play. Um, that doesn't, like... Make me wonder too why an immortal like Orzum, who who typically is a little bit more linear, right, a little bit more simple, uh, takes some of the APM out of the equation. Why we haven't seen him around so often? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, th that is kind of the you have the choice to kind of pick immortals, right? And especially in the best of three, maybe make the game plan a little bit more simpler, a little bit more familiar, something that you can can you know not have to stress that much over. Well, we'll see what they go for. Looks like we yeah. are going to go to Fool's Bay in this case, uh, which typically is not seen in 1v1, but for we, we can go there. It's it's a pretty tropical area. I mean, Execute wanted to go on the beach. Yeah, I can't blame her. I would like to no. go on the beach. It's Dom, it is apparently, I just moved the area. I live in southern Oregon, Medford. Uh, it's freezing, right? And we actually had a little bit of snow, and it hasn't done that in a while here. Mm. Um, the snow didn't stick, to be fair. And normally, like, 30 degrees Fahrenheit isn't terrible. But in my case, I ride a motorcycle everywhere. Ah. It is currently my only method of transportation. And people, 30 degree Fahrenheit weather on a motorcycle, if you're, like, on the highway or something, it doesn't matter how much thermal gear you're wearing. That's cold. No, that's 80 kilometers an hour of wind chill. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Yep. Yeah, that's... I thought that the typical kit for mic for microwaves for motorcycles would actually protect you from that though. Like you're so yeah, there there are ways to set it up, and there's like heated thermal gear as well. Uh, and and the body, right? Your torso and your legs are going to be warm due to being but by it's leather the... itself. Like that that's normally pretty good at breaking wind, isn't it? Not when you're going fast. <laughs> Today I learned. Yeah, like it, it it's good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's bearable to a degree. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I couldn't leave the pass, for example, right? Because because we're in a bit of a valley. Okay. Yeah, that's familiar. I am in oh. also a bit of a valley in the outside of Vancouver. Interesting. Well, so yeah, because when you get with the cold, mm -hmm. it's a little cold. It's what is it now? It is minus one, so it is thirty degrees here too, by Fahrenheit standards. Okay. So. Pretty close, uh, and that's, yep. I, I guess, going back to, yeah, I, I don't blame Benny one bit. Let's go to the beach, Fool's Bay. I, I'm i down to that. Although I'm also in Canada, so it's like, you know, people just kind of go to the beach now. Anyway. There's probably people that, there, there are probably people on the beach right now. Like, probably if I went down to English Bay or anything, there'd be, like, beaches all around here. There'd be people on the beach. I saw people walking around in shorts the other day, and it was like minus four, so 26 by Fahrenheit standards. So yeah. No, it's... Oh. Built different, I guess. I don't know. I, I've been living here my whole <laughs> life, and I, just, I find it freezing. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's, actually, uh... went for a similar idea with the early Pyre. Yep. But went for Mala Learn time. production structures. And... She's going for... Oh, is she going for the... the call? She is! Ha, Three. that's amazing. Yep. Yep. Turning jack -tack strategy against them. Well, jack -tack, on the other hand... Also still going for relatively quick, likely timing push on their end. Three holes. Okay, three holes of party push. This is a new one. I'm very intrigued to see how this goes. Yeah, this is definitely interesting. I think Ajari is considered decent, pretty strong even in 2v2 right now. Um, I haven't seen many 1v1 use cases where she's really kicked butt. Um, but I'm 
excited to see how this one plays out here. I do think as well, the if we get into that mid and late game pace, the ability for Ajari to warp her units provides a ton of sort of flexibility on a large open map like this. But Execute just oh. playing playing the strategy we saw her lose to essentially right now, which I think is a really smart idea. Yeah, that, and, that is if you're not sure what to do, do what your opponent just did. Yeah. Because just, it may be really good or you may learn how to counter it. Either way you win. Mala also in general is a much more uh, effective hero in a straight up fight, right? The, the effective immortal powers her spells, either at Blood Rain or Harvest, just <laughs> providing Keetle. Uh, there's not the subterfuge, there's not the invisibility, there's not this like, oh man, I gotta set things up. No, you can just build a big army, press the buttons, and win. And if your opponent tries to kill you, your army just kind of regenerates as you go. Yep. I uh, I am on the dev team, so I will, you know, not say that playing Maul is dishonorable, but if this were a game that I was just a fan of, uh, Mala players would definitely be folks I'd be like, man, you guys have it so easy. Uh, which, in reality, that's not really true, No, right? it's all really them... easy to get bogged down as Mala. Yeah, yeah. Especially like if the... you like playing a Blood Well-oriented strategy, it's very oh, easy yes. to get locked into one spot. I mean, that's kind of the... everyone's around you. The beauty of these kinds of games, right? The the expression and, and the way for people to play different styles of play. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all do require some level of skill or, or management. Well, speak it up, come in here. Execute. Try to find a way to get in. If they can break Jack Tack's army, it's gonna open the door. If Jack Tack's able to clean up execute, they execute doesn't have, they're getting their economy going, but they're gonna have a much harder time rebuilding than Jack Attack. Execute they gotta be careful when they take this fight, but when they take it, they get they're gonna have to win or they're gonna be behind. We'll see. Tom is playing for a strategy with quite a bit of Zaushin, which uh, it's been a little bit now, I think a couple of months, but they did get their rework. Uh, oh, the, they're the really change. cool now. Yeah, you didn't... They're uh, so fun. So you the, the difference, everything up. for those of you who might not have seen, could you describe it? So basically, Jack is gonna be able to speed up his units. Like the Zaushin will jump on a group of units, heal them, well, set a pile of ground, which heals them because of Jari, and then they go fast. You gotta go fast. So... Yeah, that that's what Jack is gonna be able to do. And it's gonna be it's gonna be glorious. Abusing speed is definitely one way to beat Mala as well, right? Not only to like take fights and rush the units if you can, but also avoid fights if they have committed to using their immortal spells, and then also just going around them. The go wide strategy. Ooh, I really like that expansion actually by by Benny. I didn't even notice it before. It's um, a bit. It's a curious choice. It's, it is a little bit risky because it is far away. But it's also one that Jack Attack is not looking at. Yeah, Jack, Jack Attack oh, had a whoa. proxy for the. Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> Hang a on, proxy whoa, and okay. All right. That. I hope Jack Attack watches this vod afterwards, Tom Nick, because I'm calling him out. That is mean. You were playing a friend, Tom. You were playing a coworker, and that is mean. But we're in tournament, so I love to see it. I mean, I don't know. I think it's mean not to, but I have. <laughs> yeah, I have he's, he's going attitude. all out. He's going all yeah, out. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It seems like a sign of respect. Yeah, agreed. Ooh. But also the fact that Execute did build their expansion here was really smart. Yeah. Because it, it means that there's just, although it looks like it might have had to be rebuilt, but because having been built here, the expansion is not going to be as vulnerable to the proxy. Right. And uh, whereas, this, yeah, you mentioned the scouting before. And look at this north fight, actually. Exo is... Okay. In terms of vision right now, Jack Attack, I don't think, knows that this turret is building. And there's a really crucial minute here of tension where... Yep, so this is the vision toggle for, for Jack Attack and his units. He does not see this turret. If Benny is able to successfully build this turret, then she has put a turret on the front doorstep of Tom and his army and turrets not only deal damage have all the sort of turret shenanigans you'd expect from another game they also provide a valuable healing benefit to your team and it's worth noting on top of that the blood well so oh execute man you right set yeah. up, execute a setup a full fire base between the blood well and the turret on top of having a bunch of incubators around which are going to be because of the blood well able to spawn kittle all the time like execute is in an amazing position to assault Jack yep. Attack's natural. Okay. So my question is, the Angelarium is pretty much built. One uh, that's a Warden, One right? Warden. Yep. yep. 
Single Stur Warden, no defenses. As units are being built, which can shoot up. As soon as... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, but execute is focusing on the front lines. Yeah, as soon as that Warden attacks, or if there's multiple Wardens, is Execute going to look to defend or pull the trigger is my question. Well, the trigger's been pulled whether she likes it or not. Okay, she's got a, a She has damage. a turret to hold. She does not and have a turret anymore. She does not have a turret anymore, but she does still... Oh, wow, Warden got a little bit too close to the uh, to the Bastion there. Oh, and But it doesn't seem like Execute has noticed. Not yet. No, and in fact, she army. is going for the flank. Okay, I, I love this approach. I also want to make sure that she's defending her home base because that warden right now is just raining fire and it's got no health left, essentially. It oh, doesn't, she's and we are she's going to okay. be able to take care of it. Yeah, there's there's defenses, too, yeah. there's units, and same time, Jack Tech's base Ooh. is getting hit hard. Those absolvers are... Oh, that's, that's a huge problem. The, the, yeah. Does a call can only live for so long? They're great thing to start out with, but they can only live for so long. However, execute gets this. That's just free reign inside of Jack Tech's base. Jack Tech is going to have to come back in from the outside to defend, execute. Brilliant. Yep. This is, this is this kind is, of this is a bit of an all in. This is but she can, really, she can really make smart, this work. though. Yeah, if she can make this work. She does have enough pyre to see a harvest come out. There are going to be reinforcements in a couple of seconds, though, Dominic, from Tom's army. A wise retreat from Benny. We got rid of the absolvers and defended out the warden. So, or, oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, no. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. She is up one base, though. That's true. Tom does not know yet about the sneaky base, and that might be yeah, that very, sneaky very base crucial. is keeping her alive. We can also tell that uh, Benny executed is floating quite a bit of ether at this point in the game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you can put it into something valuable. However, Tom has crippled the alloy production, and there we do see finally the warden taken out by reinforcing hunters. But man, that was a high value. I mean, both of these wardens very effective. Granted. Execute did hold off Jack Attack. That... Oh, but her force is getting split. Oh, the oh. spiders! Oh, no! Spiders I mean, are she part has a lot of, of the she ecosystem. Has a lot of she can rebuild this pretty quick. That's sure. true. The spiders... Heavy. Yeah. Oh, and uh, the turret is under siege on the... Her right side base might be in trouble. Oh, Tom doesn't hasn't seen it yet, though. Nope. That's still saving grace. Man. Force okay. coming in here. Execute has to regroup. Pulling back. Unable to defend one incubator. Drops the Red Harvest. Jack Tech forced to go uphill into Execute's nice. army. Exactly what XQ wants. Offering as well. This is a good chance. Jack Tech mostly distracted by the Grove Heart. Takes it out. But Execute again. She can continue to damage Jack Tech's force. Get out of the way. But Jack Tech has seen the expansion. Yep. Spots the root way. Knows there's something up. Now Execute's on the back foot. Oh, yep. If you play your base outside, put these expansions really far away, it's so hard to defend. Execute will come through, but again, the Grove Heart getting hit hard. And Execute just needs to take out these forces. Just is a lot bigger than it looks. And the Saushin adding that extra healing as well. Oh, just man. too, too yeah. much. And Execute really forced back. Loses there. the expansion. Losing, losing both of her expansions. And honestly, it, that Warden... We were talking about it before, but the fact that it did kill the ally production meant that Execute, she had about half the army she should have. For the yeah, amount of expansions honestly. she had built up and how well she, her armies were working in the fight inside Jack Attack's base, losing that alloy meant Execute could not build up the rest of the army. Gotta give credit there to Jack Attack as well, because him going for the aggressive push, forcing out the first Red Harvest to protect the main bases, meant that there was no Red Harvest on the table to protect that expansion. And we do see some thrums here. So much more solid anti-warden technology has been uh, developed by the Aru of Execute. However, is it at this point, I don't know. <laughs> it's so late in the game. She's going to have to make her last stand here, Dom. Well, she's going for it, taking the Saushin pretty quickly. And without a whole lot of stuff that shoots up, there is a chance for the thrums to be able to do quite a bit of work. The shields. Unfortunately, the shield's popping out. Heaven's Z just jack tack able to force execute back the red harvest is at least helping provide a little bit of time <laughs> but execute is losing so much so quickly and without any way to really reinforce jack jack looks poised to take her entire base this fight happening right on the main base is hilarious to watch but unfortunately not so funny if you're execute or a fan of hers because much of her army as well as her civilian symbiote forces have been wiped out we have some reinforcing mass hunters, but look at that! The moment they spawn, pew, they die. 
I mean, there's not much you can do, really, when mass hunters are... Wait, hang on. There is maybe something she can do. Coming... The resonant... Nah, it's getting her surrounded. It almost looked like she had way out of this, but... It was a solid last stand. Valiant last stand. And honestly, if it weren't for that warden harassment, I think Execute mm. would have had a chance to take this entire game. And I bet you look like cool Jack Attack. Happy. Jack Attack saved saved themselves with that warden harass. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I mean, it, it was we saw some really good moments from Execute. Her going for that south side attack was a really smart idea. Setting up the turret could have worked, uh, but that that warden, that proxy Angelarium, that's something for anyone who's gonna play Tom. Uh, something to look out for in the upcoming games. Yeah, I guess that was the cheesy thing they were talking about. They mentioned winning Eugene? with some cheesy strategies in the best of one last week, so. There we go. They're up against Santa. Back in the rest of the tournament, we have Santa as John Thompson's opponent. Flicky has beaten Skrilp. Okay. Patrol Shnob, we're still going on as are Wajizu and Shadow Murloc. So I do think uh, Dominic will be getting the Santa and Tom match next, right? I believe so. I think everyone else is Great. busy. That's, um. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Santa. I think I might have even seen him in chat. Uh, not 100% sure on that, though. Uh, probably is going to... Be a little bit experienced dealing with sneaky strats like a proxy angelarium so we'll see if tom even decides to go for it and if so what the response is going to be uh that's true they would have probably tried that last week i mean yeah the, the 2v2 we saw tom play in i don't actually remember i don't think we saw proxy angelarium but that is well there was a, it was in the loosest bracket that the uh... one not the 2v2 but one v one tournament in the loosest bracket they did manage to win like, they took us some surprising wins, and they mentioned something about a cheesy strategy, so I could see it being okay. Proxy Angelarium into Warden I mean, Harassment. I mean, at the point where you've played, like, dozens, hundreds of games, maybe even thousands, right? Like, Santa or, or Tom have, Jack Attack? Right. Um, you gotta be somewhat familiar with the with the concept of a Proxy Angelarium and how to well, respond to yeah. it. Well, yeah. I mean, like, the response is still a little late. It probably wouldn't be quite as severe, but it is still something to consider because, well... If you don't get it, or if it does some damage, that can still even a, a defended one can still take out half an alloy line. That's true. It is um the especially with the way that like the potential turrets, right? Arrow or omnivores, and then fire singers. Um, I remember common wisdom like a year ago was that you would have to set up two of those static defensive turrets to actually properly cover a base without any units themselves. I, that's that that is outdated. Uh, based a little off of like the bastion bit. change, right? Yes, the and Bastion then, change like is the, the big difference. Yeah, yeah. Because it is it it does hit earlier. It's a bit easier to set to have like areas that are a bit harder to get to. Yeah. In terms of defending an entire base, though, it's actually you still do need a fair few defenses. Granted, that depends on whether or not you upgrade the splash damage, because now splash damage is not. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and it, that's I mean, not the fault. It's like a philosophical question too, right? Do I use units or do I use static defenses? Uh and, mm -hmm. and like the environment geography to defend against aerial harass. Uh and that's kind of one of the those debates that like there's no answer that is correct in every situation right it really exactly, depends on yeah. the variables in the equation and it, it does depend on player preference too dominic i'm almost expecting with all this hype about the angelarium that we're not even going to see this game but we are about to find out ladies and gentlemen we are into our next game of the day it's going to be jack attack versus santa claus both them playing orism which they must have heard what we said and took it personally yeah, honestly, come on, guys. <laughs> come on, guys. Or they simultaneously had a cheese strat that is is going to be cheese on cheese. I, didn't, I mean, you say that, but they've both gone for mirrored fast expansion. <laughs> like, fast expansion. Oh, no, Ether fast expand for for both. But, yeah, Ether Expo as their opening, probably into Legion Hall. This is a very safe strategy. This is not your cheese strategy. This is your I want to play a long game. I think I can win the late game macro strategy. It's a little bit harder in a video game to completely mirror or parallel your opponent compared to a game like potentially chess or Go. Um, however, I do... a pretty darn good job of it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, 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 yeah, I know. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, man, that's, that's like literally the exact same. That's awesome. Oh, boy. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making a joke here, folks. Don't, don't take the too seriously. But, you know, there's the chance that there's nothing in the rules against, like, coming up with your strategy ahead of time so they could have had like a handshake agreement where it's like hey i'm gonna do this for the first four minutes you want to do that too yeah. yeah man let's do it oh man yeah i mean like okay i guess i'm gonna find out if perfectly symmetrical violence can solve anything we could just like turn the casters off for a couple of minutes and listen to some <laughs> russian ballet music at this point because the dance has been exquisite 
Uh, oh, there's the monastery. Uh, as a, have we seen a monastery on the side of Jack Attack? I mean, it's gonna, uh, it's no, gonna happen. No, we, we have. Oh, we yeah, have yeah, this yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, it's like, a uh, later monastery. It is five seconds with a, late. With a Legion Hall on top of it, where Santa's Bottom going for another Aether Extractor, not Legion Hall. We have finally... The symmetries have stopped. Goodbye, Parody. And hello, we've, Chaos. Yep. Swan Lake can be put away. We have decided our... <laughs> we've decided how things are going to be run. That is funny. First yeah, Pirate Because apparently that's actually a thing where... Like Swan Lake could be played when there was a leadership crisis in the Soviet Union. Like they really? put it on TV while yeah while they were I trying mean, to sort everything out. I feel like I kind of actually need to. Oh look at this micro vibe. Oh, oh wait. nice Santa stealing the fire. All oh, right, bro. so Santa is that much closer to whatever they're trying to do, which is set up tower foundations because there were some, of course. <laughs> oh, we played that so well up until the last second where Santa Oof. was like, that was a lot of effort yep. you put in for my pyre camp. Thanks for the leash, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, real real generous of Tom, honestly. Yeah. But, you know, he's he's a great guy. He, he really real, is. Real saint. Honestly, uh, that being very said, generous. though, last game we saw him being, you know, as tryhard as heck. And this game he's giving pyre away. What's up with that? Maybe he felt bad. <laughs> yeah. He felt bad uh, for destroying Betty, so he's going to play nice against the highest seed in the tournament. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, know. boy. I mean, parody officially completely smashed at this point. Uh, oh, yeah. We've got... We have much more defenses for Santa. I mean, they've been getting more pyre, so why not? And he's also going for early image Larium versus the Soul Foundry that was just completed by Tom. And then, yeah, the yeah, turret beyond as well. this, it's wow, Santa really not going for much production. Like, Tom is Tom is clearly trying to set up an early mid game army to do some pushing. Santa, on the other hand, just to look at it, it looks like fast tech. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because you rarely see a player of Santa's caliber quote unquote float resources, and he's been sitting at like the 500 range, both in alloy and ether, for a couple of moments now. Um, yeah, which like tells you me said, fast right? tech. Just, exactly. That's the like, only thing you do it for. Yep, Angelarium about to complete, which means the units, the those flying units, are ready to produce. Well, we'll see if they go for flying units or go for some kind of... Ah, Bear of the Crown, there it is. That's what I was looking for, early thrones. Yeah. Man. So Santa's going straight to the top tech. I mentioned uh, like the, the strat a year ago for, for aerial harass, but do you remember throwing esports? The, the yes. True, true yes, OGs. I do. I remember Thrones. Yeah. Thrones. Throne, Thrones are still very strong people, but their their special attack, their blades of the Godhead, used to fire instantly as opposed to sort of a shotgun, or, or I should say, consecutive shotgun. Now, um, yeah. So that's a pretty interesting strategy. I mean, they are Thrones are still an effective unit. Oh, Santa Claus getting a little bit. It's like silly a revolver shotgun. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like, like, I don't know. Okay, if you ever played Shadow Warriors, like the Riot Gun. I have not. Or it's actually like a change the modes, because that could do both. But yeah, Ooh. it's it's one at a time instead of all at once. Okay, Zephyr have made it home, but Tom has a sizable army, so he might not care about the Oh yeah, there's this is not going to stop anything, especially with the, okay. the absolvers in the back now. Oh, but that might stop things. That's, That's going to a... hurt. Yeah. Hey, losing absolver here is entirely unable to deal with any, any of the moats. And... No, that was actually a bit suicidal. Yeah, Jack Jack overestimating how much their force could do. Santa able to Dominic, hold. Dominic, this entire time, there have been Tentari in the base of Jack Attack with those Dervishes while doing some harass. They were able to kill most of the moats based off of the fact that, you know, most of the moats are, most dead, are dead here. Yeah. Uh, and I will say that early moments of that push were good, but the moment the spell was committed, that Empire and Broken buffing up the resilience and the damage of the structures there. Plus AoE. Yeah, that's just such a response by santa claus and, and tom paid a lot to make that happen i will also respect the use of the moats they don't yeah, sleep on I, moats. I was surprised don't sleep was... on moats there yep oh no they are strong moats are really strong they're they're frail that's their main weakness but they can deal enough damage that you're quick like one or two dervish run bys even can get completely shut down by moats you gotta be careful yeah. That is definitely a, a lesson that I've learned before and seem to forget every single time until, you know, it comes up in moments like these. Something I want to mention about Santa Claus and this Dervish run by, he's done it a couple times now. It's actually been working because his Dervish has yet to, yet to die and he's gotten quite a number of kills here. Oh my God, the body, oh, the block, body block on a block. Zephyr without Windstep or the build. So mean. All right. This is no longer a friendly game. That was, no, but uh, this is, that was brilliant. This is, yeah. And this is all Santa Claus just buying time. This is all a distraction. 
Because yes. their whole goal is to build up an army of thrones. As every Everything child else, across yeah. the world knows, the greatest gift Santa Claus can give you is a bunch of thrones. Yep. Bombarding your base. That is indeed the greatest That's gift. That's what I've always Move wanted. Move over, Cole. <laughs> it's time for angels to ho, ho, ho. drop their wrath. Time for angels to bring down the wrath of God. That, oh, speaking in of, a biblical sense. <laughs> yeah. The I don't know, time... kind of both biblical and Magic the Gathering sense, really. It is going to wipe everything <laughs> yeah. out. I wonder which which was the rest of the... Oh, wait. Oh, he didn't stop the production of the the moats, and they're coming back. Oh, and the, going instead. I That's like That's actually this, really though. clever. Yeah, is, yeah. Tom. Solid, solid move there. Unfortunately, Scepters do deal enough damage that's... <gasps> the one of them's going to come up? Oh, yeah, this one's... This is actually going to be built up. That being said, this is both attention and resource being taken um, by one unit of Santa's. Well, it's and, only going to last uh, for so long, but yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Not to mention, Santa does... Actually, no, if you look at army value, it's very even. Santa's entire... All of Santa's assets are thrones. <laughs> thrones songs. Oh, he's going for a that's proxy it. base in the top right, by the way. Oh, wait. That's no, I'm... I'm uh, yeah, I was like, there's no base there. What am I saying? But there is a pirate They might be going for a proxy base in the 6 o'clock. They do have a moat oh, set up there, yeah, yeah, just in case. <laughs> or sorry, the twelve o'clock rather. Oh man, what is going so on? So you this might game? you might be right. We the first couple of minutes were so even and so mirrored and synchronized, and this has just been complete chaos. And, yeah, and Tom has three hundred sixty four pyre. Okay, Tom has three hundred sixty four pyre. They have a, they have a pillar on deck. They have pretty much the perfect unit composition to deal with mass thrones because the scepter yep. came up, so they're already primed to think anti air. Santa, they. They still have a chance here. They're going to have the Blades of the Godhead. It's going to help out. Oh. But if Tom can deal with this, Santa's going to have a very... Santa's going to take a while for Santa to rebuild. They only have two bases. Still Santa coming into the Castigator. Oh. is being wiped out immediately. Pillar dropping in the middle of the fight. Santa with the solid surround getting rid of T T Tom's tech units. Zephyr's able to take out a few thrones here and there, but unfortunately a lot of the thrones are just dying too slowly. Yep. Still now it's just thrones. Zephyr's able to take out what they can. Two, three, four left. Oh, three boy. left. The crown jewel of oh, the Grothy Army. Oh, this is actually working out amazing level for, for Jack it's Attack. It's close. It's close. That I do think pillar. That win, pillar. But... They might win, but honestly, at what cost? Yeah. It's so much easier for Jack Attack to rebuild their army right now. It is in terms of effective rate and cost of each unit but this entire time dominic there has been continued harass that is the ability of a player like santa his ability to That's manage true. multiple parts of the map and we can tell by the resources by the army value by the current population this is the lead for santa claus the fight was not as clean as he wanted it to be but the damage done other sides of the map that's gonna be a nightmare for tom coming in here as the castigators are up that's that's all they need to deal with the thrones, but the Cascaders aren't up yet. And like you said, the Scepter is harassing. If Tom can hold this off, it's still going to give them a route back into the game, but that's becoming a, an increasingly big if. Something to note, too. The Scepter's uh, distracting here, the Castigators, forcing the anti-air back and looking for some blade snipes. Oh, my God. He just... <laughs> that's so troll. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, okay. No, oh, I don't know. Tom, they got 200 pyre. They can drop a tower on there. No, that was that was Santa Claus's. I know that was Santa Claus because Tom oh, never dropped the tower yeah, on yeah, that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that is kind of funny. In. Right? That <laughs> that that was a uh, early foundation place a couple minutes ago by Tom, and uh, I guess Santa Claus is just reminding him, "Hey, by the way, you can build this." Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Santa Claus is still going for the thrones. I mean, Tom's going for full castigate, a castigator's effort. They are going full on anti air, and castigators in this number, in these numbers, we already saw with the pillar. The dozen Zephyrs were able to nearly take out these thrones. Castigators has yep. splash damage. It's a it's a bold and strategy, range. Dom. We'll see it's a bold strategy. Let's see if it pays off for him. Yeah. I, I do think he's partially just committed to the meme here, and the meme is so, yeah. death by castigators. Well, they got they got the pirate at least. Ooh. I don't know. This is good candy by Tom. Dodge some of the shots from the blades of the godhead, doing some good damage, and the splash, like you said, is so damn strong. Is Ooh, the, it? the high ground control. Oh, He's trying the to numbers, deny vision. The numbers. The numbers. Yeah. The Castigators getting right under the thrones. Not not the best move. Might still be able to take up more of them, but <laughs> it's coming down to the Zephyrs now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Losing those Castigators was a is, big blow. Yeah, Zephyr, Zephyrs can't fight this like that. And something really important I want to note. 
Uh, for the folks watching back at home, we have visioned up the entire map at both players at the same time. There was yep. a couple of seconds there where Santa Claus very, very expertly sent his thrones on the high ground, which meant that Jack's army didn't have vision of the thrones. And as a result, Santa Claus is able to take the fight, take the game. We're going to game two. That was a very well played game, though. Oh, like, yeah. Amazing opening. But it's surprising that a Norse mirror was a mirror. Yeah. Did, did I mean, not expect that. From start to finish, that was uh, one of the more wild games in a 1v1 that we've seen in a couple of weeks. And that's awesome. That is, you know, especially because we've been working with some of the tools uh, of this most recent patch for a, a little bit now. Uh, there's still so much more to explore, which is really exciting to see. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. Well, I got to say, I'm. I am impressed with Tom's resilience to what Santa Claus is throwing at them. And really, you're right. It came down to the division. They're just pulling around the side. That yeah, was I critical. Mean, because, yeah, that, you're right. Because I didn't even... I, I missed that. Because when Tom, when Santa went up on the high ground, that meant that those cast gears had to follow, which is why they were underneath yep. the thrones, which made them vulnerable. Yep. Yeah, that was like... Such I mean, a granted, the Zephyr split could have been a thing. But again, it's Santa taking advantage of the fact that Tom's probably going to be moving their army as a group. I mean, that's the brilliant thing about that game. Uh, that moment was one of those subtle moments and, and even like the dis subtle decision to kind of siege the base early from Tom. Uh, there was a couple of moments there where very, very subtle differences would have completely sent us into a different timeline where Tom ends up winning. But mm -hmm. that that's kind of why these players like Santa are as good as they are because they rarely make the wrong play. And in a situation where it's a 50-50, they make the odds, they put them in their favor and they come out ahead. Well, let's see if they pull that off a second time, because we are going into game two. Tom's choice of map is Frontiers. Frontiers? We were just on Canyon. Definitely the two most standard sort of 1v1 maps we've seen so far. Definitely a different type of map, though, because the pathways are less snake-like, I suppose. Frontiers was a, the original Frontiers map a long time ago was basically just a demo, and it was very simple. You had the, the diamond-shaped pyre camp, uh, mm -hmm. And then since then, we've sort of adjusted the pathways a little bit. There is some more sneaky potential, but I would say compared to Canyon, which is a <sighs> canyon, has those two sort of little tunnels or those crevices, those canyons, uh, and, the, and the main elevated pyre ground, this is a little bit more straightforward, in my opinion. It is. It is very constrained, but it is a little bit easier to navigate. Personally, I think it is a significant improvement. Oh, yeah, and compared very, to, to I, the old Frontiers. It's was, interesting, uh, too. The other Frontiers kind of, you, you had just the path to the ex an expansion uh, over here, and that was the main expansion. It was Dominic? kind of a weird opening, and I see that Santa Claus is indeed going uh, for <laughs> a big moat push. Uh, okay, and this is a small map, so moat pushes are technically things you can have happen. Yep. Okay. And so the the bar you're seeing on the screen right now is the, the turret bar. The turret is not active until that bar is completed, the 145 mark. The Bastion is online right now, uh, but yeah, Santa Claus is committed to this. Oh my goodness. It's your body blocks. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's not, that's a... Oh geez. The, is that going to... Is that going to work? I mean, usually what happens is that Santa gets some damage done and that's it, but... This is an incredible know. strategy and it's slightly unethical. I'm not going to lie. Oh, beat him up. Get up! No, he's there. How did he get away? How did the body block not work there? I don't know. Oh my goodness. Goodbye, Ether Extractor. Oh, it's one Ether Extractor down. What has Tom planned? Okay, send it to Legion Hall. Just gonna get that going. Although, it, 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 yeah, don't let the Grobbles <laughs> die. <laughs> that goes down, you lose. Uh, unlikely to die by Symbiotes, but it is funny. Or excuse me, most. I don't know. I mean, this must deal a lot of damage. Just see them try. Grobbles down. Wait, there's no shot. I have to go for the Legion. Oh, they could get the Legion Hall. There's no way. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no. Okay, how much is Empire Unbroken? Was it 40? Or no, it he's, he's, he's jarring. Like I'm jarring. I mean, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is the right response from Tom. Send in the moats to, to at least distract long enough for the Safari to build up, which is going to be effective here. Uh, something to note, too, the, the way production works in this game... It's likely that Santa's main base has an entire line of workers again. Um, yeah. Or, yeah. Wow. I... <laughs> He's committing to this. This Atari have made it. The actual units are here to, to support the real heroes. I don't... Tom, says, Tom is saving the day. What happened to the first game? 
The, the nice parody of the Tech King, the playing for Tier 3 and Tier 2 units. This is just war. Endless carnage. And uh, it does seem as if <laughs> the core Jack, Jack Attack, a.k.a. Tom, has been able to push back Santa and his uh, moats for a couple of moments. But more Centauri reinforcements have arrived. As you said, the way production works in Immortal, it is it is the case. Santa was able to build up behind this. That's why the moat strategy, moat push can be so powerful. Because you don't actually lose as much as you'd think. That being said, Tom, defending against this pretty reasonably well. Got their yes. nuts. Running the front line with the... I mean, Zabari can't hit over them, so... Good call there by Tom. And now, Santa forced to retreat, and... Jack Attack continuing their tech. Yeah, the, the micro, well done by Tom, able to defend. He's going to be able to get his second base up. And uh, we do see rush strategies like this. You can go for the quote-unquote uh, one base all-in, but it's definitely not like other games... You know, StarCraft, early sort of crazy Warcraft through shenanigans. Um, typically, you're going to have to expand at some point, And you can use early harass as a way to slow your opponent's game plan. Uh, I don't think it's a sustainable single strategy. However, Dominic, Santa's putting that to the test. He has yet to expand. You're right. This continues to just be push. I think they're... Tr I'm, if I had to guess, it'd be a timing push. Like, just send more Zentari around the time the expansion just about finishes. And he's got the vision of it. He knows yep. that it's being built, so... And he's also going for some pyre here. Maybe going to try to build some up for... You know, I don't know. A pillar is going to cost so much more than he can afford right now. Um, but I'm curious whether he, he commits to the one base all-in. That's a good, good question. Also, I just realized Santa donated a tower foundation to, to Tom. This is a oh, neutral foundation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were Christmas. trying to set up towers, forgot to, I forgot to, well, I can't really, can't delete it, so you just would have to attack it, forgot to get rid of it, and now an extra tower for defenses. Or maybe this is all a 360 IQ bait to make Tom waste uh, 75 pyre to build the turret there, where it's well, not true. really guarding the moat line. That may be. I, I, mm. At the level of play that we're at, Dominic, I, you know... I, I can't hesitate to guess what goes through the minds of these players. And what dark secrets lurk in their hearts. <laughs> He's also committing to the one base all in. Uh, do wow, not try this at are. home, people. It is not advisable. Um, yeah, the, the uh, fact yeah. that Santa's making this work is a little odd, and it. it this it's is more a, that Tom hasn't punished them yet. This is <laughs> like, a Tom very. Is setting up yeah, to punish yeah. them. This is but, a very crappy airplane with an amazing pilot, is all I'm going to say. Pretty much. And, and uh, we'll see how it works out for him. He does have the pyre now for a pillar, and you got to imagine that's the play. Oh, the timing is perfect. Tom just now getting the units to counter, but only just now starting to. Here we go. This is the only time Santa had to do this, but it is the best time, and they've got it. Some Front of, of these are is entirely already low, though. So They are, but that... That can't. The absorber can't get too close. Uh -oh. Setting up takes too long. It's getting wrecked in the meantime. Morris and Tari coming around the back. Tommy will start <laughs> holding off a little bit because the in the front what is dead. The, heck the natural is expansion going on? is gone. Tom needs to move these moats back home if they want to live. Oh my goodness! He's vampire broken it. Whoa! Oh my god! Extra damage. Oh yep. my god! Morsum yep. Is showing him the hand. I. Now, that being said, Tom does have a couple more Absolvers popping in the back. If those are set in the proper defensive position, then Santa Claus will not be able to move forward. However, this is a nice oh, little neutral tower foundation God. that if Santa had 75 pyre, they could take, but they don't, so they can't. Keep in mind, though, there is that natural pyre acquisition that Orzum gets a little bit faster than other Immortals just due to his uh, passive. That being said, though... Uh, the push was successful. He got the expansion, and now yep. he's expanding off of that because he recognizes, all right, cool, my opponent's contained, but I need some more money to, to continue the siege. And Jack, on the other hand, realizing <laughs> it's just better not to have that. It's the Trojan Don't... Pillar Foundation. Yeah, no, it really is. It it kind of did work against them. You're right. Like J Jack Jack did not have enough for Straight shields up. or anything yep. else. Like they, they couldn't actually do much with that pyre. That... <laughs> 
<laughs> and that literally might have been the difference maker in terms of like keeping the absolvers alive, defending yep. the push, killing the pillar in time. Although now, going for House of the Fading Saints, which okay. likely means an upgrade for the absolvers is on the way to make them yep. deploy faster. Yes. So in recent times, if you're coming back and haven't played Immortal for a while, um, or just in general, if you're new, many, many of our units are going to uh, have at least one upgrade in terms of either providing them with an active or a passive skill, right? Range bonuses is pretty common. Um, I think both Zentari and Zapari, the main infantry for Orzum and Ajari, do have two upgrades that they can just get to make them faster, mm -hmm. better, stronger. So Yeah, speed and shields for Zapari and yep. range, and I believe shields for Zentari. Yeah, effective health for sure. I don't know if it's specifically shields versus HP. Uh, and the Absolver army right now of Jack Attacks is incredibly powerful into Zentari if you can be sieged. And yeah, it, like, it is a wall oh. of thorns. There, that's an example. Teapot's not particularly tanky, but that shows you the destruction they can rain. No, if, if all these Zentari were to rush these these Absolvers, they'd die. Yep. Just, just straight up, they'd die. And we already see... Okay, I like... This is Tom being very clever about their opponent's unit choice. Setting up air units against an opponent who has clearly decided to go for a full-on ground army that does not shoot up. Yeah, this is interesting. We see the... Uh, I I wonder if the Centauri are going to be a, a, a mainstay, a commitment here from Santa. We saw him stick to the thrones throughout the last game, so maybe he's just trying to... Play, uh, no, it's looking like probably not, but... For now, it is the main stage. He's building some more Centauri, but he does have control of the map for the time being, Dominic. Uh, as long as he doesn't That's scary. just sort of... Oh, the end oh no, the time is the oh, worst okay. time of the end deploy. Okay, but they do have... No, they don't have the upgrade. They don't have uh -oh. the upgrade. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. The Centauri is still going to get yeah, wrecked. Yeah. They cannot come in here. Bit of a reality check. Centauri still not going to be able to do enough damage. And here we go. The harass coming in. But then you have Sharu on the deck. Like, that would... Compl that would... I mean, just awe-strike them. The Absolvers wouldn't survive at all. Yep, rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. This is uh, the never-ending my counter beats your counter, beats that counter, and here we go. The, the, I don't think... Okay, we do see a shower being built now in the Angelarium. Yeah, no, there's... It's absolutely... Santa the, Claus is not teching for nothing. And wonder, Jack Tech knows it. I want to take a look, actually. Is that just a, a scout in the, in the natural expansion of Santa Claus? Nope. That is uh, a natural. That is an expansion. That's a third. In fact, can we? Okay. They, they look the dervish there. The dervish. Oh, the dervish. Oh, I see. From yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, Tom is also starting the ancient while harassing on multiple fronts. This is a great counter push. Does mean Santa can't really push this if Tom? Oh, if Santa gets this though, that's another pillar. But it does. Well, oh, yeah, Santa yeah, being baited yeah. heavily right into this. Oh. Going for the absolvers. And then Tari wow. taking heavy damage in the process. And this losing all these units for Santa. That's... I don't know. Oh this yeah, the concave actually... there was amazing. Jack oh, losing almost was... all of his absolvers. That was perfect. Santa Claus was... able to pull that out. So many damage in Tari, but they didn't all die. Right. The difference between that fight and this fight we saw a few minutes prior on the line was the horizontal line. Right. The Zentari had to funnel themselves in, and off of that, Santa is able to take advantage of the open ground. Force the Absolvers away. I think he's still going to try to commit for this Ancient. It might be risky because there's a lot of blinking red HP bars here. Yeah, and those Absolvers... There's more Absolvers back on the way. And if Jack Tech were to recommit, they target the right things. They uh -oh. got time. That's... That Ancient just got oh, three Zentari kills. Oh, yeah, no. Jack Tech could absolutely take this back. <laughs> the, this is wide open. Santa Claus can't even contest it anymore. Something Brings it back down to even, and that's it. Something I love about the Ancient compared to like a MOBA like boss, you know, Roshan mm -hmm. maybe or Baron Nasher, uh, you can't instantly finish off and steal the Ancient. You can see that bar at the top that's signaling the damage dealt by a certain team, and you have to get the bar entirely in your team's color to actually get the Ancient. So that means that Tom isn't able to just snipe this back. He's got to work at it, which makes for a really interesting push and pull. Uh, because this entire time we've been watching Santa Claus's base still get harassed. Oh yeah, they're ma they the warden just got taken out by a Sharu, so you know Tom knows a Sharu's in the way, and the Dervish also helping out in the natural expansion. So Santa was not able to expand at, or build up as much while Tom was rebuilding their entire expansion and taking the ancient. So surprisingly, even game where Jack Attack is in fact ahead in army value, mm 
-hmm. and also kind of prep for what's come ne coming up next. And also, for good measure, has enough for salvation. Or whatever they want, really. They just got all the fire in the world. Interesting. This is going to be uh, certainly a sequence of events. Uh, on another sequence of events that I'm going to handle. Uh, folks, if you're watching and you're an active participant, Jalong has gone down for the time being. Uh, so we will figure out how to handle that after this game. Um, it's been having some issues, so it's probably going to be up and down all over the tournament. So don't worry too, too much. Cool. Good to know. If, if it stays down, we'll sort out how to keep track of who's yep. where. Yeah, I have a screenshot of all the participants as well, so we should Great. be good. Dude, with pen and paper like back in the day. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. So uh, back into the action. We have actually had a lull Ooh. for a couple of moments, but there are multiple Sharu getting dangerously close to Tom's forces here. And not any, and nothing that shoots up. There was one Castigator briefly at one point, and nothing since. More Castigators are on the way, but on the way does, is not in the fight. We'll see now. Tom does have a ton of Pyre to play with, but it really depends on how you use it. Uh, actually decided to go for 75 use of turret here, and oh, interesting. Now, yep. Santa's seeing Tom's expansion, Tom... Still one base behind Santa Claus. Despite the early aggression from Santa Claus, Santa's actually been very much ahead when it comes to bases. Now oh, these resolvers can't. No, you can't hold. You cannot hold. All strike is too much. Like this is Sharu. Very good choice against the absolvers. Absolutely the best choice against the absolvers. There is there is no fighting that. Yep. It's the counter to the counter. So we'll see now. Tom taking some casualties. Going to be forced to develop his own counter, oh, no. and uh, the counter, unfortunately, will, will never, never be, be seen. seen in this timeline, because it seems we have a disconnect. Could have a couple more moments. Uh, occasionally, we do see players come back, but it is probably going to be a tie there. Yeah, nothing was... There was no obvious lead. Yeah, that, like... Although Tom, yeah. Tom thinks they're dead, uh, which is fair, because they didn't have anything to really push that. Yeah, I mean, the the... Abuse case is a player thinking that they aren't dead. So if Tom concedes, then mm. then we'll accept that. But let's uh, let's take a look here at the bracket because it seems like we're still having some trouble with Chalon people. I would have put, I believe, Mr. Santa Claus into the winners semis. That would have yes. Um, and currently we've got other matches going on. YJ Zhou versus Shadow Murloc, and Flicky and Skrilp just completed. Hydraulic's not a voyeur. Okay, um, give it a minute to see if it comes back and sort of coordinate with the players. We can definitely continue the tournament. Uh, there's no reason not to as far as just manually writing the bracket, but it does seem as if the error has been going on for a few minutes, Dominic, so... Sorry, folks, for the delay. I uh, had a couple technical difficulties with the tournament software. Uh, I misunderstood. I believe that the game was over, uh, this match between Santa Claus and Tom, a.k.a. Jack Tech. But it's not. We are into game two. We are indeed into game two again, as last game two was not game two, but this game two is game two. His last game two, game two crashed. So uh, taking a look at this upcoming game, uh, Dominic, if you could sort of recap what happened and what we might expect. Well, what happened last time is that Santa went for a moat rush that ended up not working, and Tom pushed them back. It was a, a Jari. Tom was playing Jari at the time versus San Santa playing Orzum. Hmm. So Jack Attack was able to push it back, then switched heavily to Absolvers, which dealt with Santa's Mass Centauri. However, Santa shifted into Sharu, and Jack Attack both, I mean, using Absolvers, obviously had a hard time dealing with that. And also because... They were fighting the Ancient and were a bit stuck fighting the Ancient, like targeting the Ancient and not the Zentari. The Absolvers ended up getting killed by a bunch of Zentari attacking them, at which point Jack Attack kind of had nothing to play with, but was rebuilding as Santa was going for an attack, but Jack Attack had forces on the way that would defend it. So it wasn't clear whether or not Santa would have won. Yeah, so we got this tie game uh, situation and the crash, so we will be making it a redo, run it back. Well, sort of, except Jack Attack switched to Orzum, but Well, yeah, right, same map, right. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the last game we did see was very chaotic, so I'm wondering if that's going to be the, the, the pace of events today, or this moment in this game. 
Mm, no, Santa's going for Ether Expo. That's pretty normal. Actually, Expo Ether. Yeah, they're going very economy. Yeah, and it's interesting because we talk about how cheesy Santa is, but it's more of a how cheesy Santa can be. Oh, because yeah. Because he is very capable of playing quote unquote standard. Well, that's the scariest part. If you're good at cheese and you're good at not cheese, then it's like. Because if you're always cheesing, your opponent knows you're cheesing, and so they just look for the cheese. But that's if you're true. sometimes cheesing, then your opponent's scared because they have no idea. That is a crucial part of how to make cheese work. Yeah, there are folks who just try to make cheese and they only force cheese, and then you get, you know, lactose issues. Yeah. Granted, it can work in ladder systems because you don't have a lot of rematches, but when you're fighting in a tournament, it does not work. People will see it coming and know exactly what you're up to. Unless you do it uh, sparingly. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty, pretty standard stuff, really. I mean, got the monasteries coming in, second expansion coming in. Well, it's yeah. natural for both. Tech, tech focus for Santa, unit focus for Jack Attack. Yeah, slight Couple deviation. Hall is probably just going to go heavy Zentari, bit of a push, and then. Wait, are they going? If they go with three before building a Zentari, I'm calling timing push. Oh, no, monastery. Oh, okay, maybe they're just going for. They clearly want to make sure they have an army available to them. So I have a question for you, Dominic. The the concept of a timing push isn't like, I get why it's called a timing push because it's really about the optimal timing, right? But mm -hmm. isn't any push you make at a certain time a timing push? Uh, okay, if you're gonna be pedantic about it, is, yes. Yeah, I might be a little too, too pedantic, <laughs> but like. I mean, the, the point, the idea of it is more, it's a push to exploit a specific weakness in the opponent's Right. And the opponent's strategy where they have heavily invested in something, usually tech, although sometimes expansions, but haven't had a chance to have a payoff yet. That's the timing being referred to. Yeah, it, it's definitely the, the optimization, right? Just sort of yeah. the, you are at the the power spike, if it were. Also, Nova. it might it uh, might be a, a artifact of the fact that a lot of these terms come from Korean StarCraft, where the terms used are a little bit idiosyncratic. Mm, that's fair. Like the use of manner to mean bad manner, for instance. True. But thankfully, we have very little of that as far as uh, our community and, and our players. Unless you consider but, cheese, too much cheese, excessive cheese, bad manners, or harass. I oh, consider. I see what you mean. Sorry. I was like, you said, <laughs> well, we don't have any Korean players, but that's not a no, bad no, no, thing. No, no, no. The bad manners. I'm so bad confused. Manners. What? Is, like, no, 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 no. You no, no, say no. That. Okay. No, Thank no, you for no. clarifying that, because I was very... I was like... We <laughs> have had Korean players in the past play. Um, uh, yes, and but it's like... They, and they and were well-mannered. Imagine that. Yes, they were. They, they were... There was... I mean, I don't think anyone isn't. Most the people who play this game have been really good about just being pretty chill people. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's lovely. It's great. All right, so on Wait. the other side of the bracket, for uh, everyone keeping up, we did just have a report that Shadow Murloc won 2-1 to one against YJ Zhou. Uh, he will be going up against Santa Claus then. Uh, at the... Uh, well, or, or Santa Claus if, versus, if hold Santa on, Santa wins, Claus versus Jack Santa Attack. Wins. Right. Santa Claus has the advantage here. Uh, they do, they do have one game Attack. lead. You're right. Yes. 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 That, that is um, true. However, we will gently remind myself that that doesn't mean that he's won the series yet. He might <laughs> no, win the otherwise... series. Tom might come back 2-0, though. Who knows? And so, I mean, so far, Jack Tech's actually starting out really strong this game. Like, solid unit composition, winning the first fight handily, and otherwise relatively even as Jack Tech going really quickly in Tangelarium, while Santa Claus focusing heavily on Mass Dervish which, I mean, you got the Zephyrs, you got Absolvers up. Honestly, Mass Dervish is... It has room to breathe, but it's... Jack Knight's going to try to to tighten the noose on that one. Yeah, I'm curious. Why do you why do you think we see this change? Hmm. I mean... I honestly think just Santa likes Dervish. That's... Quite frankly, I think that's that is honestly it is. an acceptable answer, yeah. Yeah. I think I think Tom, I think Jack Attack's counter approach is just perfect. Like it's the it's the, it's the right move. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, a little bit difficult for army value because they lost Resolver and the, the positioning wasn't great. But the choice of unit is fine. So just trying to get a bit 
I don't know, if the trick is playing Orzum, they don't do well outside of their own territory. That is literally Orzum. That is Yeah, that yeah, is that, that is, is how like they're designed. That, they <laughs> they control their territory and eventually, hopefully, if you're an Orzum fan, every territory is Orzum territory. But uh yep. outside of their territory, they're not that strong. But you can't stop there because it's Orzum country. <laughs> yep. It's all Orzum country. Even where you live, watching from your chair. Oh, yeah. Your no. You you actually all don't know this, but you are in Orzum country. Yep. Or you will be. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Uh, what would you say so about that dervish run by? Strong? Weak? It, meh? it did some damage, but I don't. it didn't really do enough to justify its cost. However, mm. it did do enough to make sure that Santa could get another expansion, could get some pyre. I would give it just a... Just generally maintain map control. That was, that was the real win. out of 10. You know? Definitely yeah, no, better, was, better than yep. not doing it. Got value. Worth. Absolutely worth. Oh. When we oh, have text oh, chat wow. enabled, can you imagine? Dominic, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be that guy who sends a bunch of AROCs to do stupid stuff, and then I'm just going to type worth, even if it's not worth. <laughs> you know, I kind of hope that the game has, like... This is something I generally see more from games made in Japan, but I really kind of hope it has a situation where you have, like, a... Like, you do have free text chat, but also just a bunch of, like, pre-made phrases. Just to make it easier oh, to yeah, communicate yeah. in general, because then it just will auto-translate them. Or it just has, like, you pick the phrase, and then whichever language is your... The person is playing it, it'll yeah. show in that language. That's, That's a really always a nice feature. feature. That's a totally side note, but I think that would be a good way to both encourage more polite... Or the particular type of chatting you want because the defaults could be like polite and also just make it easier for the international scene mm -hmm. agreed as for the well uh, as for the orzum nationalist scene it's uh, santa claus they've got their tower and oh boy did they, oh getting baited out of there absolvers completely wrecking the dervish do not have a chance the howler pull from jack Ouch. though that was brilliant yeah. That was that was so that was perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Now Santa Claus having to be so careful because the units keep consistently getting baited out of their tower. Well, Jack, that can just take it now. <gasps> Empire Broken coming in from Santa. Uh, but that's Jack's, quite the commitment here. Well, it is. I mean, this burnt Jack attack once before, but I think they're no, they're gonna go for it still. And the one lone dervish on the side. This is actually doing a lot of damage. That yeah, cone Jack you see, lost about half their army in the process. The cone from the Dervish attack, you see it on the screen every time. It's a bit of an AoE, and the Empire Unbroken has worn down, but damage done, I feel. <laughs> there, yep, uh, Jack Deck able to take it out, but at quite the cost. Yeah, he, he is thankfully still, uh, you know, for him at least, in the driver's seat, has the stronger army, currently has good production going on, but with the three expansions we've seen from Santa Claus, uh, he'll be back sort of four expansions in actually they just got a fourth. Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> no. he'll, he'll be ship shaped soon. So if you're if you're Tom, if you're Jack Attack, you probably want to take this moment to expand your own territory and sort of threaten the pace of the game. Given their army, it might not be a mistake to see if they can hunt down one of the expansions. I mean, four hallowers, that's that's a siege army. Get out yeah. of front liners for it. That could be a viable option to push. So, a little bit of history, um, I suppose. And, and it's funny because many of my casting anecdotes are based off of, you know, nine months or even older information because that was when I was casting a little bit more often. Um, do you remember when teapots were unlimited? Yes. Uh, so You bought them for 20 know, alloy each, but yep. you could have as many you wanted. Yeah, super cheap, and you could have a bunch, and you can put them on every sneaky base all across the map. Mm -hmm. You can't do that now, right? You get the two maximum teapots. However, you can upgrade the teapots to be an observer pot, like a flying, right, can see invisible units. Yes, or and you can build costs, that outright as well. Yeah, you, you can build it outright, and it costs more resource, but it is a way to get a similar effect where you can have multiple scouts just chilling across the map. You um, can. It's 50, but it's 100 ether. Like, it's right, 50 that, alloy, but 100 ether, it is... That is the question. Yeah. Do you think it's ever worth it in these kinds of situations? Yes. Okay. I say that because I do it myself a lot. I do think it's worth using, but I do think it's not worth using in, like, too excessively. Like, one or two. Mm-hmm. 
Speaking of, though, it actually would really help out here just to make sure the Hallowers, they know what's up with them. As Santa Claus is entirely relying on Hallowers, the kiting is not happening fast enough, though. Is Jack Tech able to catch up? Ooh. Santa Claus with the Empire Broken to give the Hallowers a place to retreat to. But if Jack Tech can just hold them off, I mean, the Ancient's theirs. That's If the Ancient's theirs, the Tower's, the Pillar's theirs. Or they can just take out the Hallowers. That's tech units going down. Committing this is a little bit risky. We did see it not work that well before. For, but I, I think this one is oh wow the snipe at the end there Oof. i don't know man but these guys are going back and forth i mean once again jack attack does have the slight lead overall uh that being said though it is by a razor thin margin uh, whoever goes air first is gonna just completely take this game no one's going for heavy anti-air and yeah i mean that's that's the biggest weakness right now dervish absolvers the Hallowers, Hallowers, Centauri, everything you see on the screen can't even shoot up, right? Not even with a weak attack, they just can't shoot up. Oh, okay. This is interesting. It is interesting, and Santa Claus has the has the right composition to deal with all these resolvers. Yep. So it's a question of time. Can Tom yep. build this Ooh. out in time? Gets rid of the tower, but losing all their resolvers in the process. But his own tower, there's kind of a That's, choice here. That was daring. Yeah, he also put a foundation there, and I, I'm not sure if that was a misclick or not, but at this point, the main Absolver force has been wiped out, and Santa Claus has a million Hallowers, and that's actually going to force out the GG from Jack. So Santa Claus wins it 2-0. That, that went from 0 to 100 really quick. That was a solid demonstration of why it's very important to be careful about Absolver, uh, Hallowers, because, yeah, Hallowers make things go from 0 to 100 real quick, or 100 to 0 is the case, maybe. Yeah, I mean, just the the difference between mm -hmm. the the push and pull, the close fights we had before, um, and then just boom, like in a flash, right? The game is over. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You you cannot sleep on absolvers or on hallowers, especially when using absolvers because hallowers are meant to deal with the position. Broadly speaking, the way that it works is that absolvers can hold it, hold the position, but hallowers can break it. So you have Hallowers against Absolvers, the Absolver player has to be very careful how they position things. They need to have something to distract the Absolvers, to distract the Hallowers so that the Absolvers can do their job. Yeah, it, it really is, uh, I don't know, it's it's the classic battle of like range versus mobility, right, versus mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, yep. Typically, the Hallower wins in the isolated scenario because he outranges it. There's the range advantage, right? Yep. But if the Absolver gets close enough, goodbye Hallower. So we're going to be having the winner semifinals of Santa Claus versus, what was it, Shadow Murloc? So we, okay, I got entire bracket is going to be Shadow Murloc, Santa Claus on street. Uh, Hydraulics, one on the opposite side, so he's waiting in winner's final now. Um, lower bracket right now is YJ Zhao versus Jack Deck. Uh, and then the winner of that's going to go against Flicky. Uh, and then on the opposite side, not a Voyeur versus Scrope. Uh, and the winner of that is going to go against the loser of this match. And if you didn't understand what I just said, that's totally okay. We'll walk you through when we get there. The important thing is that Shadow Merlock and Santa Claus are up next, so Shadow exactly. needs to come to the stream lobby. Man, it, it has been up. a while, Dominic, since I've had to write a little manual bracket. This is reminding me of like middle school, high school Smash Bros days. Oh yeah, sorry. For those of you who aren't familiar, Challenge just seems to have gone down, which is why we were taking a bit of a break and just generally trying to figure out what was going on. Although if you're on yeah. YouTube, you wouldn't have seen the break because I tend to cut them out. But the... But yeah, that's what was going on. So yeah. in case you're wondering. I'm it does seem to be consistently stable, so I'm actually gonna see if I can catch the thing up as well on Challenge. Um But yeah, it's, the the tournament administration yeah. for double elimination or oh okay, like like, like large factor tournaments, man. Like I am sure you've seen like FGC tournaments with pools. Yes, they seating. have they will have usually into... two or three people handling a bracket per pool. Per pool. And, and each a pool, pool is... is only thirty two players at most. Right. So you could you can effectively run tournaments with thousands of entrants in, in a couple of days, right? And bring it down to a yes. double elimination bracket. However, the the logistics involved is considerable. It's a lot of divide and conquer. Yep. Like you are basically running a bunch of tiny tournaments, each of which is like 32 players. And then each of those, okay, finally, challenge is actually starting to cooperate a bit. Yep. But yeah, each of those is run by two or three, like has two or three people handling scores and reporting scores you you have a lot of people per pool as you're going through mm -hmm. and it's it is it's a lot like it, it's very it do make sure if you ever have a tournament like appreciate the tos the tos are doing a ton yes. of work and it's all volunteer 
Yeah. And it is a uh, lot. It is a yeah. lot, a lot to do. Well, what, I mean, I'm not even trying to, to, to cast you and I up here. Uh, casting is one thing, and, and we do run the tournament order and administration for, you know, low entry tournaments. Um, but yeah, TOing at a high level is a lot of mm -hmm. work and typically not as much compensation as you might expect. So love your TOs, love your, you know, your judges, uh, your casters as well. Um, and yeah, we are heading into this next match. So we have Santi Claus versus Shadow Murloc in the winner semifinal. Shadow Murloc, a constant dark horse player who I have found, you, they, they have a real habit of finding strategies that you don't always think about that tend to just like catch you blindsided and then they win. So yeah, keep an honestly. eye out for what they're up to. I mean, it's so far it, is a you know it's definitely a real aggression i mean this is this has been like this has been kind of normal meta but still shadow murloc they might have they got obviously got something up their, they probably got something up their sleeves and if they don't then it's just straight up solid play yeah uh shadow murloc's definitely been on the come up so something for santa to be respectful of for sure uh and something for the stands of santa claus uh the oh. santa clauses uh to be afraid of <laughs> shout outs to nabiri in the chat for for making that that new the new fan club tag if you, yeah you're you're <laughs> I, I don't know if that makes sense but it's pretty funny uh combining that there so credit to that <laughs> are they uh, shadow Merlock? okay they're doing something proxy they're doing something proxy and i don't know what and they have blocked Wow, <laughs> they no scouting. with the teapots. So we're talking with the teapots. That was one big change. I don't think you've really seen a whole lot of Seamus. Is that teapots can attack each other now? That's true. I love it. It is so goofy and hilarious. It, and I, has... I really, I love the dynamics of it. I think, yeah, yeah. I think there's room to make it even more dynamic and make it even more, even deeper. But it's mm. a solid foundation. Oh yeah, right, I so... mean, especially because in a one v one, you get two of your own teapots, right? So you yes. can bait them into a two v one scenario. In in a team situation. When you have a teammate, there's a lot of goofy things I've seen so far. I'm saying goofy in a loving way, right? Because it does oh, yeah. look silly and it feels funny. But I, I think you're right. The dimension it adds to the game is fantastic. And I'm really excited to see exploration of that concept. Oh, but the teapot does spot it. Okay. They so, would have seen, they might have seen the root way. It's I'm hard, not going to lie. Hard to tell he, might have not, he, he would have had to watch the teapot though, right? The root way would right. not have shown up on the mini map. So... There is a chance that he doesn't actually know. Oh, but that teapot did... It did take out Shadow Murloc's teapot, so Shadow Murloc okay, cannot okay. hold off the scouting for very long. Uh, oh, this is going to be dangerous. Santa's, Santa's going heavy on tech. He's got their soul founder. This is this is perfect. Shadow Murloc coming in way sooner than Santa expected. This is a timing push. Santa's just now getting the tech going. Has not paid off yet. Zol dropping as well for Shadow Murloc. If Shadow Murloc can take out these Antari, it's over. We'll see. Shadow Murloc... Going for the natural. The natural in big trouble. Zol, of course, with the summon, goes for that third auto and power attack. That third laser beam. She wants to get kills here as well. Something to consider is the trophy system that Zol has now. She gets stronger the more kills she has. Doesn't actually get that many kills, but of course, used very effectively to zone the defense off. That being said, Santa Claus is able to rebuild the Zentari Shadow Murloc with the surround. Solid surround from Shadow Murloc, able to take out everything Santa Claus threw at them. And once again, that Acropolis is on the chopping block. More Bone Stalkers coming in consistently as Shadow Murloc. Don't, has no reason to change the strategy. This is working beautifully for them. Santa Claus does have the Soul Foundry up. They could start getting Absolvers to block off the Bone Stalkers. Shadow Murloc, however, much more concerned about making sure nothing gets rebuilt around the map. Spe yeah, spotting all these moats going around. Santa Claus trying to build any everything, anything, just to make sure that they don't suddenly die because they run out of town halls. Yeah, this is uh, this has been quite impressive by Shadow Murloc and putting Santa Claus in a very precarious situation. Of course, the out could be just build all these town halls up, all these Acropoli. Uh, he has not Is it Acropoli or yeah, well, if it's Acropolis, actually, in the Greek. Oh, but my. Okay, Acropolis but what is it in the, in the English, Acropolis. Is. Acropolis. Okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. But no, Greek I, world. I, I had to look that up, actually. Yeah, I know. Like 
We'll continue the conversation of etymology later because I don't want to bore the chat with it. But that is kind of curious, yep. like because octopi is the classic. Yeah, it's so that's that's weird because octopi is actually the Latin plural, assuming second declension masculine. The assumption, if you were doing Latin for Acropolis, it would be Acropolis. Interesting. Because Dominic, that's third it is all plural. Greek Sorry, I, to me. I no, 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 no. Of... <laughs> actually that was Latin. <laughs> I know, right? Oh man. Sorry, I yeah, just want to I just I, I just go with the English Acropolis. Fair enough. Yeah, it's like that's that's the most sensible thing to do. We're speaking in English, so might as well use the standard English blues. We are trying to. I I struggle sometimes. I mean, we all struggle sometimes, you know. But we do our best. Uh speaking of doing our best, what is Santa Claus's best response here? Santa Claus's best response is honestly either air or absolvers. Actually, air is not a great response because bone stalkers shoot up. But absolvers are a solid response just because he can't really push in. Like, bone stalkers don't do well against that. Yeah, I'm curious. If you have I'm... enough of them. If you have enough of them. We do see the Angelarium going for a Sentinel? I Ooh. think they're trying to go for point defense on Sentinel. Oh, of course. I can't think of what else they want to go for. Yeah. Unless they're unless they're anticipating the Shadow Morlocks going to be trying to which... pit it into behemoths. Mm, we which... haven't seen... I okay. think that's a fair assumption, it, but it's on the table. Spaces. Right. We haven't seen it happen yet, though, and any strong indicator of that. And something to note, too, actually, the natural expansion has just been started by Shadow Murloc. Santa Claus is actually a little bit ahead. Man, we have seen some really aggressive sort of pseudo all in uh, single base pushes today, huh? We have. I think Shadow Murloc would have actually had a chance to make this really pay off if they, after that first thing. There's another path that could go up to get into the top high ground because they didn't want to go up into the tower because you don't. Perfectly sensible. But there is another path into the high ground plateau, in the main base plateau. And mm -hmm. I think Shadow Murloc would have been able to take that. As it stands, Santa Claus, the more time they have, the better it is for them. Now coming from the proxy, Shadow Murloc needs to hold off this proxy to survive. But honestly, I they aren't really building for anything. Like, they're uh -oh. trying to get tech, they're trying to get something to run by. make a final push. No and this run by is going to make it that much harder for them to make that happen. Yeah, the Bastion on your right side of the screen there doesn't actually have the range to hit these dervishes. Shadow of Murloc has not even really responded yet. Now he's pulling some of the workers away. Damage has been done, though. I do think we might see the counter push as the answer. Oh, there we go. The, oh, bait. Trying to bait into the into the hunting grounds. And not going to go for it. Nope. Instead, just going straight in. Drops Zol once again. And just like... Fight like right into the breach. Why not? And the answer to the why not is because it's actually this is, uh, craft units are extremely tough. Wow, this is yeah, just forcing him back is Santa Claus and his army. Shadow Murloc though, dancing back and forth. And man, this is this is the this is like the the mental capacity, right? That mental load. How much can you focus on as a player at once? If you're entirely focused on mm. the micro or your expansions and you're not protecting your main base, you're going to lose out in the long run. And Santa Claus, once again, doesn't matter who he's playing against, he's proving that he can make you have to micromanage all across the map. Shadow Murloc trying to think of what to do now, but they're on the back foot. They've, sp they've spent so long waiting, building up, trying to figure out how to press, biding their time. But that all benefited Santa Claus. Now Shadow Murloc trying to find some way, possibly to bait into the hunting grounds, to at least mm. get that damage bonus, and there they go! And that damage bonus is significant, those Centauri also do not have range Ooh. attacks now. Shadow Murloc able to get some revenge! Interesting. Impressive defense so far from Santa Claus, but maybe biting off of a little bit more than he can chew in that last fight. That being said though, these Dervish, the offense on the other side, just two Dervish oh, yeah. this entire time have been wreaking havoc. And Shadow Murloc has basically been on Bastion income only. Santa Claus, on the other hand, two bases. No problems there. Yep, like, literally, the, the difference maker so far. Shadow Murloc essentially still has a strong army at the footsteps of Santa Claus, but where you might expect reinforcements to come in over time, they haven't really been there because the economy was continuously crippled. And now Absolver's online for Santa Claus... He might really feel confident to, to push with a strong force here. Oh, and that's perfect timing. The dressers, or the dressers rather, aren't in yet. And that specific oh, altar yep. is going down. Just getting canceled completely. Not even going to bother. 
But the altar's no, gone. On, those, red, those red sisters were, sorry, red seers were the exact thing that were needed to get rid of all these resolvers. That was the counter, and now it's gone. The proxy's destroyed. Santa Claus has just saved everything in this game. Honestly, I, th I think you're absolutely right. The army value, the effective value, the economy. The only thing that Santa doesn't have an advantage in currently is Pyre, but he doesn't need the Pyre to win at this point because one Zul summon is not going to be enough to defend against this behemoth army 10 minutes into the game from Santa Claus. Shadow Murloc is going to have to scramble, right? Sort of mm -hmm. expand as well as you can, get as many resources as possible, and build up that army again because right now, in a straight-up fight, he will lose. And I'm curious if Shadow Murloc has enough trophies to drop Great Hunt. I, like they, I, I honestly, it's a hard thing to guess because we don't see the the, the We don't, code, yeah. But I, I don't think so because it's level five and we didn't see that many kills. We'll see the fight coming in. Well, Hunting Grounds did some damage, but it's those Absolvers. They're up. Shadow Murloc oh. can't really punch into or fight into them. Santa Claus, on top of that, having the Hallowed Ground, yeah. everything Santa Claus needs for this assault is this, right here. This is like such a godly combo. The Magi are going to be able to redeploy, get the Hallowed Ground up, which means the target get the range, which means you have healing everywhere, and the effective power boost is insane. Santa Claus has got the checkmate position, and Shadow Murloc knows it. GG. Game one. A wild game though it is. It was only game one. We in fact have a second game. Possibly a third, depending on how the second game goes. And Shadow Murloc gets to choose which map we do that on. Okay, so I have to say I'm very impressed by Shadow Murloc uh, because the early moments of the game were in his control. I think he had a very wise strategy. I think he executed the early moments well and sort of at the midway point the way Santa Claus came back and eventually took control of the match was the multi-pronged harass and the fact that we didn't actually see sort of higher expansion rate that you might want. Do you know so, what the score was for Shadow Murloc and Wajazo? Was it 2-1 or 2-0? Two 2-1, two and it was, a, it was a banger. It was a long match is what they told us. Challenge is kind of going back and forth between being up and I marked it wrong. I mean, it's not as if we're, uh, we're not like tracking ELO score based off of results yeah. at the moment or anything, yeah. so... Typically speaking, I mean, honestly, uh, it is better to report the accurate score, uh, but most importantly, it is most important to report who actually wins. Right. So, well, game anyway, two. On the other side of the bracket, Hydraulics has actually made it to the winner's finals. Yes, sir. And uh, the winner of this match actually will play against him. And the counter pick on the map choice from Shadow Murloc, he's going back to Lost Province. But they are switching to Mala. So, same faction, but less sneaky, which, if they're not going yeah, to chase like, stuff, that kind of makes sense. I, I like this. Like, I, I think that Zol has use cases, and I am a Zol stan. Um, definitely my favorite Immortal so far. Um, but I, I think that her use cases are not necessarily niche, but very uh, specific, I'll say. Um, and Mala is just very good at straight-up fights, right? Yep. We, we saw the proxy bases. We saw some sneaky early moments, but that wasn't actually in terms of using the army and using the units. That was only in terms of how they got the setup. And at that point, it was kind of head-to-head -head fighting the entire rest of the way. Um, so for that reason, I think going from Zol to Mala for Shadow Murloc is a great choice. I... Yeah, okay, yeah. now going for the expansion, absolutely. I, I mean, the big thing for us, Zol has much stronger early game than Mala. Bone Stalkers and Upgraded just do better than Mass Hunters. So that's why you often see Zol get used for these cheeses. Because they, they can rush really well. Yeah. While Malin needs to have offspring for those mass hunters to to shine. But the thing is, I do think that there that while there is kind of a niche case for Zol, it's I think a lot of it is more that when Zol works well, it's because you've been really smart about how you positioned your units relative to your opponents, and you've really oh, yeah. taken advantage of vision. So I think Zol is one of those immortals we see really high level players use that well, do very strong hit and run attacks. And that's just a lot of work. But when it works well, it works really well. Yeah, and, and that is, I mean, similar to when you and I were talking about Orzum earlier today, that is l design choice, right? The mm -hmm. asymmetry in playstyle is 100% intentional. Uh, and it's only going to get more fun for players to play and then watch as we see Immortals. Oh, wait, no, never years. mind. No, no, I'm. What's no, up? I, I've completely. 
wrong, because if you notice, if you look uh, here in the south side of the map, you'll see that Shadow Murloc has decided that, no, he actually quite likes that proxy alter strategy and is going to try it once more time. Well, I'll give you some, I mean, <laughs> I'm giving you some credit, man. It's not in the exact same spot. It's actually it is not, the and opposite spot. And it's actually a bit spot. later. And, yeah, and Shadow Murloc has yeah, also yeah. expanded, which makes it a lot less obvious to Santa it, Claus what's going on. It is a more robust iteration of a similar play. And fundamentally, in my opinion, it's less so about the proxy bases and or, or like the, the 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 proxy bases were successful last game in my opinion. Yep. Uh, it was the the follow up right and, and the unit use yes. afterwards. They um, that Shadow Murloc lost steam. Well, they didn't really lose steam. They 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 got cold feet. <laughs> that had steam. Yeah, they mean, had, that, that they could have is... pushed in. They just needed to take the high ground by another route so they could they weren't fighting into Zentari up the up the ramp. Water's cold, man. I mean, water uh, conducts the cold much much more effectively than although i guess steam is a gas form at that point. oh cancel the expansion santa claus interesting i, I will don't... notice they don't see it in the, yeah. Im immediately but they will notice there's no the lack of moats yeah. lack of rootway but lack, again it's yeah if they're paying attention often, they'll wait a sec, wait Dominic, a sec. how often do you actually like look at your stationary scouts is the question depends on how good of a player you are <laughs> yeah like literally right uh so we would assume someone at Santa's caliber would kind of surmise that, but that is a really clever play from Shadow Murloc. Uh, and we the game is in a really interesting state here because Santa Claus, there's a knock on the door. Surprise! It's the Mass Hunter army. It's 24 Mass Hunters with, with Red Hunter, Harvest with the and offering. offering. Oh, uh -oh. oh, where's Empire Broken? Santa Claus is... I don't know. Are they not going to drop it? Are they going to cancel? They, are they going to cancel the tower? Ooh. Yes, they're going to cancel the tower. Okay. So they have enough empire broken if they want to drop it on anything. Try another Oof. offering drops in. Red Harvest is expired. Okay. So Orzum can be a little bit more... Or Santa can be a little bit more aggressive, but... No, Shadow Murloc's not going to let that happen. Are you joking? No, no. No, Shadow Murloc's going to keep pushing. Santa Claus does spot the proxy, but they okay. really can't do much about it at this point. Yeah, it, it's it's effectively a non-issue until the main army is actually dealt with, um, and the the response we would hope to see from Santa at this point is, yep, sneaky sneaky. Either going for aerial units early, potentially expanding with sneaky bases. He doesn't actually have the alloy to build a base right now. They don't, but it they do have the mode outside because I'm clearly double checking. Like, are there any other proxies? Anything else going on? What's happening? As yeah. well as providing insurance. Right, so we'll see now. Oh my god, Shadow Murloc is playing this base. Okay, okay. So Lost Province has two positions for for central bases right next to the main pyre yep. camps. And they suck. I mean, like, okay, they, they don't suck, but like, I said that dramatically. I don't know, Shadow Murloc um, seems to really enjoy right, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Like, they, they know what's up. They're so difficult to protect because because they're in the middle. They're where the action is, where the, the, the pyre yeah. camps are. You, it is rare to see them taken in a regular 1v1 or 2v2. It is exceptionally rare to see them in a six minute 1v1. However, this is actually one of those use cases where, holy crap, if it pays off, it's going to be huge. And Santa Claus is I mean, just going to be. What are they going to do? The defense is right there. There's a, there's a big wall of unit buildings right in front of it. And the only thing behind them is a scout. Yeah, and the, the, boat. I don't. I don't know, man. We we saw the teapot. I don't know if the teapot actually saw the construction of of the the grove heart. With the timing, it, it went, I think it, it was, did. I think okay, it, okay. as it went through, I think it might have seen the grove heart just start. Like you, I guess if you're Santa, you can go sort of to the north. Oh, rocks being started, and Santa knows. Yep. This is going to be interesting is, if Shadow Merle commits uh, because he Shadow might not Merle win up just without a low ground right here. Yeah, they don't know what's up. They don't know what's... <laughs> oh, they do... Oh, no. They're Ooh. getting baited. Getting baited. Okay, smart play. Do we not seen... get baited. Yeah, we've seen Star Wars, the episode three. Yeah, it is... That, that's episode six, isn't it? Where it's the trap? No, I was going to say... Uh, I, oh, the high the ground. having the high, I, ground. The high ground. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you're right. Although, yes. you know, it's episode six. We have seen one of the third Star Wars films. Yeah, one of, the it, it, there's, or, there's the trilogy or, for Star or... Wars have a tendency for that. I don't think... I don't... Did the did the sequels actually have one? Rise of Skywalker. Uh, oh god. Maybe we'll, we'll go back and watch it. Later Honestly, for... that I don't remember the movie very well. It was a little bit of a mess. Yeah, Twitch chat. You you got her back. Someone someone let us know if there's a if there's yeah. A did Rise trap. of Skywalker have a trap? Like a moment where it's like, oh no, we we're getting trapped, or have like some kind of tactical advantage thing? Oh, Dominic, I'm so I'm so excited to share this. Um, apparently in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, 
the third uh, phase, or maybe it was yep. the second phase. I think it was the second phase. Sorry. Um, Which movie? Every single film has one case, at least one case, of a human or humanoid losing an arm, as a reference to Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Literally every single <laughs> film, like twelve films in a row. Was they, it really they, that many in Phase yeah, 2? Yeah, no, like, I'll, yeah, I'll show you pre, the, That was pre-Avengers Endgame. It was 100% so, yeah. intentional, and it was so... I, I watched a video essay the other day, a, a very long video essay, on the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe so far, and, oh. yeah, every single... It has all the, you know, all the clips, and it so was... I'm trying to remember where all the times that would have happened. I'll, I'll link you. There, there's Thanks. a lot. Okay, <laughs> there I, there I are can't, a lot. I cannot remember right now all yep. of those situations, because I can't remember which ones are Phase 2, to be honest. Well, it, 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 may, it may be... Ooh. Oh, Shadow Murloc split up their army, and now Santa Claus finally the opening. Shadow Murloc getting... This is the same thing I tried to do last time. Go to tech, get to Dread Sisters now. The get feed. to Spellcasters, and work from there. They did get rid of the insurance moat, so Santa Claus will have a harder time <laughs> expanding. Should this come up... Now, the Absolvers are down. The Red Harvest is up as well. Santa Claus being baited uh, back. Shadow Murloc does, obviously I, doesn't want to get the Absolvers. Can they snipe one? Yeah, can they snipe the one? They oh, cannot. No, nope. it is protected the, on the high ground. It was a very cautious choice for Shadow Murloc not to commit with the Red Harvest active while the Absolvers were down, um, and he'll definitely not commit right when when they're mm. on the high ground again. I I hesitate to to wonder. Like I think he might have won that fight, but just barely. And even a Pyrrhic victory no, at this point you don't, would not you don't be in his favor. No, yeah. he, he it, Shadow Murloc is behind, so they need to win decisively. Yeah. Like, this cannot be a Peric victory. This might be the time, however. The casters are Roots out. Roots coming in here. Yep. Do they have Birthing Storm is the real question. There goes the turret, though. So this is going to be interesting. Definitely a, a, a <clears throat> testy moment here. Absolvers undeploying, redeploying, undeploying, trying to get those inches, make this Orzum's territory once again. Mm -hmm. Those masked hunters are struggling. I mean, that, yeah, unfortunately, it's... they don't have the HP to deal with the Absolver directly. So unless they can snipe the Absolver as it's deploying, there isn't really a, a path with Masked Hunters. At this phase of the game, right, the Masked Hunters is definitely something you want to phase out. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, they're, they're I mean, fortunately as well, they're, they're very cheap and sometimes it's sort of your only option. But more as a call, more casters, behemoths potentially, right, aerial units. Um, yeah. One thing to keep in mind about absolvers versus infantry: the closer a unit is to the absolver, the more splash it does, the more damage. It does. Yes, it, and that's that's a big reason why mass hunters have such a hard time because they don't have that long a range. So they need to get quite close to really surround them and deal with the damage. That being said, behemoths are on the way, so if Shadow Merlin can hold the line long enough. Behemoths will just wreck everything Santa Claus has built up. Oh, he has this is Shadow Merlin baiting Santa Claus into a push. Okay, Empire and Broken comes out, forces the retreat, but a lot of damage done. It's going to heal most of that damage back. However, that was a really good timing push by Shadow Murloc. Or a timed push. Well, yeah, it's a really yeah, good yeah. push not, to not keep Santa Claus distracted. But it does yeah, keep yeah. Santa distracted. Because yep, now Shadow, Shadow Murloc getting the... Getting all the bases that are just like... <laughs> they're getting the exact inverse of the bases you'd normally get. It's you like, know... If, if, if we di if we didn't know these players, it'd be kind of a question of guys. Do you know like do, do we need to tell <laughs> you, them afterwards? You, do you know like, how there's, there's like natural work, expansions, right? but they're those, no. They, I mean, in this case, like they they are doing this for very smart reasons uh, with an yep. element of risk, right? Uh, but the risk so far has paid off. And to be fair, I mean, as Shadow Marlock like, holds this, they can just take these expansions behind for free. Like they have the map control starting from this part of like the center. Everything else behind it is theirs. They just haven't claimed it yet. Ooh, the scout, the Satari scout doesn't see them. And, oh, it's nowhere near seeing it. This is totally hidden. Shadow Murloc, two dun, upgraded behemoths on, on the way, and, well, just continuing to produce them. Why not? This is this is where Shadow Murloc can start to take the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gone from Star Wars to Jaws. <laughs> no, same era. Still, uh... Brilliant composer John Williams. Yep. That's the that's the common factor. Yep. Also, thank you, Twitch Chef, for reminding me. I think actually Adam Akbar says it's a trap in Rise of Skywalker, but oh, we don't that's need to talk true. They might have done that. Oh, big fight! Big fight! Six. Okay, Shadow Murloc coming around the side. Er, Nero sure Birthing Storm is able to take out the Absolvers or very quickly surround them, and from there the snipes come around the side. Santa Claus getting surrounded. 
able to get yep. quite a lot of damage off Shadow Murloc in the meantime, making this a bit of a Pyrrhic victory. But with ah. those behemoths coming in, that is no longer a problem. Shadow Murloc taking Boom. the victory and now can rebuild and just push into Santa Claus at their leisure. Yeah, that fight was definitely in Shadow Murloc's favor. He's got the fast building, and this is brilliant. The mass hunters now are going to be the answer to the castigators that should be the answer for the behemoth, right? The, yep. the ever-evolving game of rock, paper, scissors, all the different unit combinations, and Zakal as well. Zakal are going to be oh. really tanky in that situation. Yeah, and more Absolvers are on the way, so Zakal are going to be perfect. That's exactly what Shadow Murloc needs to deal with the Absolvers. He is in firm control here, Shadow Murloc, just just able to push his advantage as he sees fit. Santa Claus, if you're a Santa Claus fan, you want to see a stall. You want the game to take longer. You do not want to fight in the next couple of moments. And the next couple of moments are exactly when Shadow Murloc is going to be prompting a fight. Santa Claus wisely pulling back to a tower. They do have enough for Empire and Broken, but Shadow Murloc, if they can it's, stop it's, this curve, that's already enough. Like, like I actually think that Santa Murloc has shown very smart caution sometimes, and this is one of the times where you don't want to see those cold feet. I do feel as if a pushier would put him in a checkmate position, um, but he has yet to really commit. Going up the high ground ramp, we'll see if that's a bait or an actual push. Uh, Shadow Murloc being quite... Sniper not really committing maybe? to it quite yet. Mm. So yeah, turret will go down, uh, and for anyone watching who, who's unfamiliar with the Behemoth, you can see the segmented line with four bars above them. That's not their health, that is their effective Keedle, their ammunition. Yeah, they shoot off one tiny little little unit that dies after a short period. And when upgraded, as they are now, they shoot up to four. Yep. So turret was taken down and, and not too many casualties. Blood well is a little bit of a reprieve. Safety oh, net no, this on. is not just a safety net. Don't forget, Mala, if units, if enemies die near the blood oh, yeah. well, I think units in general, but death near blood wells increases her pyre count. That's actually which such means a... she can drop more red harvests or possibly yep. even a whole, whole rain of blood if need be. Great shout out. Very, very smart play here from, from Shadow Murloc. And look at that. You see the Keedle used to take the turret, the tower going down. What a snipe. Oh my goodness. Towers being down for Orzim not only means that he doesn't have the defensive option, but he's also not generating his pyre as fast as he wants. And rebuilding that tower means that Santa Claus is Ooh, vulnerable expensive. to any attack. No yep. Empire Broken on deck for the next probably 10 seconds. Shadow Murloc has an opening. And that opening is going to be taking advantage of and take out the third. Oh. Keeping Santa Claus contained as Shadow Murloc just double checks, make sure Santa Claus does not have any insurance expansions while looking to take out their main base. A Rude plus Keedle, very Rude effective plus here. Oh. Cascades are actually able to get yeah. in, though. They are be far up behind their forces. Now the Brinstrom coming in here. Brinstrom on top of Root it's as committing. Shadow Murloc closes in to take out the Absolvers. Again, a lot of damage here, but those extra Kittle do help turn things around. Still, Shadow Murloc knows this is not a fight they can win. It's only a damage they can deal. Yeah, the retreat sound call there. Some of the behemoths, uh, most of them are actually pretty healthy. We did see one get taken down, but they didn't have the keto, right? That's the really important yep. factor here. That is lowering their effective damage output until that reload is complete, so to speak. Um, and as a result, Santa Claus is actually able to, to push Shadow Murloc back closer to the line of scrimmage than we've really seen so far in quite some time. However... Shadow Murloc is sort of encroaching and just still controls essentially 80% of the map. Uh, so Santa Claus needs to continue to push him back if he wants to win this. Well, this Kittle... Kittle Rain is just going to be trying to get rid of... Trying to get resolvers. The resolvers right now are still a bit of a problem. There are a lot of calls. It's just that's still kind of tricky because you do want those mass hunters to get in there and they don't live long. Also, I want to point out that the effective healing of a blood well, to my understanding, is just one unit per per it is. teal tick, right? So yes. compare that to like a tower, right? Or, or some of the other units in the game that have faster, more AoE healing. Um, yeah, Shadow Murloc wants to make sure that all his units are healthy, and that might take a little bit to, to get them there, or potentially a blood rain, but he is still quite a ways away from that. No, they've, they're not going for, they're going much for Red Harvest, so they don't. One invest too heavily into that, but they are forcing Santa Claus to move, taking advantage of that distraction, and opening up the third as the main base is getting attacked. Small little strike group in the back line just to distract Santa Claus, but that's more than enough to open Santa. Loot the Santa losing several absolvers. Shadow Merlock mm. able to take out most of Santa's Ooh. tech units. Another beam that does go down. 
Shadow the Murloc, it's got to be careful. Yeah, I mean, this is so interesting because we saw the root, and it was a great root, but then the behemoths continued to fall. Shadow Murloc also, for a brief moment there, was floating over 1,000 alloy and ether, which is such a significant amount. The fact that he lost a lot of his army isn't even a huge deal because he just is rebuilding that now, and in a couple of moments, he'll be ready to go again. And we might enter a really interesting situation here, Dominic. At 18 minutes, bases are starting to get saturated out and, and, and mined out, right? Like yeah, the, Bastion the, as well. Bastion yeah. income's done. The 1,500, give or take, on that main base there for Shadow Murloc, you got to expect that the some of the expansion are going to have some more gas in the tank, but I, I'm worried for Santa here because he's only ever been on three bases at most. Mm -hmm. And there, well, the main base is almost done. The natural expansion is still pretty healthy. The third base only was recently taken. So Santa Claus mm -hmm. still has two healthy running bases, but without the Bastion and the main base, that has two base income to like three, maybe four base income, depending on the main base for Shadow Murloc. Yeah, it's very impressive comparatively that we've seen Santa Claus be able to fight back with this lower amount of resource, but you know, it's maybe the day of reckoning. Oh. Shadow Murloc pulling in. Santa Claus trying to avoid getting into combat with the Dread Sisters. They've got to deal with that sooner or later. So that, set, that scepter in the back line still keeping Shadow Murloc kind of... I don't know. They're not worried, clearly, too much about this scepter. Taking it at their leisure. Root it yep. out. Snipe it out. Get... Yeah, it's done. But, A, that did slow them down a bit. However, again, they just got the Southwest expansion. They still have potentially their natural and third, so safe expansions they could fall back to if need be. All right, Santa Claus, if they... Santa Claus needs to break this position up front in order to have any chance in this game. Shadow Murloc... As, if they could starve Santa out at this point. Like, we were talking about stalling before, but now the tables have turned, and Santa Claus is the one who needs to act fast. Hmm. We'll see here. I, I do like to watch this kind of game as well because it's really a position for Santa Claus, who's such a brilliant player. It, he's in a position we don't actually see him in often, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's not been the aggressor. He's not really been able to play his cheesy strats. Uh, he will need his ingenuity to come back here. Uh, and man, credit to Shadow Murloc for just putting on the pressure from the get-go in both games. And in the second game, you know, he stuck to his guns, and it's working even better than before. The fact that they were able to get that set up for the proxy a little bit more robustly, like you mentioned, that, I think, sealed it. Because it meant that like, any attempts to break it weren't really as successful because it was more robust. And then they could actually get their dress sisters, get their behemoths up. And when they got their tech up, then it paid off. Like, that's mm -hmm. the moment where everything pays off. So let's see now. We see a little bit of a strike force on the side. The defense coming out from Santa Claus. Are the behemoth going to reply or are they just going to go down? Uh, they're going like for the flank. Yeah. Oh, interesting here. Getting the broken storm on top of that just to add a little bit of extra kit, a little bit of extra damage. And here's the Red Harvest coming through on top. Shadow Murloc surrounding all of Santa Claus's forces with everything at their disposal to make as many kittle as possible. Wiping out Santa's army. Santa has a hallower. And a castigator. Yeah, this is the 11th hour for Santa's forces in this second game. So far, he would have to pull the miracle of miracles that we have yet to see in the Mortal Gates Spire to come back here. But he's still fighting. Well, power to them. And they do have an expansion over in the corner. They've got good. a They're potential expansion <laughs> inside no, 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 of no, Shadow no, hey, Dominic. There's no way this is happening, right? Then it's they're, Santa they're, Claus. It's Santa That's Claus. True. That's true. I mean, Actually, good... I, would, I would say it's unlikely because Santa needs to rebuild an army in order to not die. But, yeah. no, Santa would absolutely do this. Well, <laughs> would absolutely fill in that in their bones I mean, natural. He does need more expansions at this rate because oh, his, yeah, third one is, yeah. uh, or his third base is not long for this world. Third um, base is down. Natural is almost, or remains mined out. Natural's getting close. The, I mean, if the third base goes down, the natural's not going to last much longer anyway. So, yeah, you know, why not just take this base right here? I mean, Shadow <laughs> Murloc's not looking there. Half of their production's coming up from the front lines. <laughs> Stranger things may have happened. I haven't seen them personally. That would be that would be up there, but... I mean, and... the bigger question is, how do you deal with this many behemoths? Like, yeah, Santa Claus I mean... technically has the right answer in terms of unit types, but the numbers are just not on their side. 
yeah, you just not fight, right? But unfortunately, uh, that not fighting isn't really an option. This mass hunter group, just a couple of them, is going to spot the base out. So even if they die, they don't even die. They're able to, to, to force away the moats and just stop the mining there. And I, wow, like, I... I have to say this again because Shadow Murloc is a player I definitely haven't seen much often. Oh, a little bit of poking here. This is not good though. Any trade is in favor of Shadow Murloc. So there you go. There Take it is. It. Shadow Take Murloc it. grinding it out. Yep. Uh, throw in the towel, says Santa Claus there. I will do so. And uh, we'll bring it to a game three. GG. And uh, we'll see what the reply is going to be like because, man, Dominic, that was so cool. Like, that was. You and, like, like so I, I I typically don't cast these right, uh, and mm -hmm. I did last week and then this week, which I'm I'm really grateful for. I have known YJ Zhao to be one of the the more stall like cautious players, and mm -hmm. I've known Shadow Burlock to be a good player in the past. He's he's been on the grind, but I've actually not seen him play. And the fact that he has this kind of style, which is so methodical, is awesome. Yeah, that's something I didn't really remember about Shadow Burlock, but. Clearly, I should. They were an Orson player before for a while, so at, that tracks. He played Zol and yep, attempted to do that, that kind of stuff. Like, that, that threatening... I don't, I don't know how to describe it. it. It's very... It's not, like, super active in terms of constant pressure in terms of attack, but it is very constant pressure in terms of the movement across the map and the stranglehold, right? And, like, slowly choking out yep. the game. Then he swapped to Mala, did the same style again. Uh, we, we were joking about the territory control, right? All of the territory belongs to Orzum. And yet we still see Immortals, whose kit naturally might, might not play that way, are still very effective in the hands of the right player. That is still kind of... That is, however, there's a way that Mala does kind of play. Like, it is worth noting. Mala's, Mala is no stranger to being that, that push, that gradual, oh, yeah. grindy... Well, into your opponent's push. You say that, but he even, he even demonstrated at least the early moments in the first game that he could do that on Zolt, right? Like the, That's true. The, the, the play style, in my opinion, of the player is overriding individual immortal picks, right? He's like, this is my strategy, uh, and, I, and I'll tune the immortal pick to what I need it for, but this is how I want to win games. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I had one moment where I had like some criticism. Maybe you could have won that fight, but it, in the end, he won because he's playing it so methodically. And that is a good way of putting it. Methodical. That is the best descriptor I could think of for Shadow Murloc's play in these games. And the question now is, Santa's reply, what do you expect to see? Well, we're on Embargo, and Santa's playing Orzum, and one of their... Okay, they're kind of going forward, but not, nothing too cheesy. So Santa, given what they've started out with, their response seems to be... Focusing on make sure they have units, but not necessarily trying to be overly aggressive. Just being cautiously aggressive. Yeah, the, the, there is definitely a, uh, you know, a bridge too far. Uh, too much caution, the cold feet like you said earlier. You do not want to be cautious simply for the sake of being cautious, because at that mm -hmm. point you're not testing your limits, and you're not actually capitalizing on mistakes your opponent makes. Um... There's definitely a, a balance, and, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see in Game 3, different map, right? Uh, we've got a different setup overall. I don't even think we've seen Embargo today, but of course the, the Immortal picks are the same. Whether Shadow Murloc can take that pressure and sort of that advantage, whether he can build momentum in Game 3, or if Santa Claus come back swinging and wins the series that way. Well, that's... That's always the tricky thing, is trying to maintain that momentum when you're fighting against someone like Santa Claus, who's just disruptive. Like, that's their entire game plan, is disrupting everything. How do you maintain momentum against a player who is constantly doing some different thing every time? That That is... Uh, the moment you answer that question, the moment any of us answer that question, we've become the greatest coaches slash players ever. Uh, yeah, it it is an ever-evolving thing, right? There, There is no... So if you want to become a really good coach, answer that question successfully. There's your, there's your test. <laughs> so we'll see now. It's, uh... I, I I do think we'll see some really cheesy stuff from Santa. Um, he's already showing nice. much more aggression than we've seen so far in the series. Oh yeah, early for Centauri. This is... This is a little... Yeah, definitely aggressive. Go, go with that as a descriptor. It's... Early for Centauri is... 
something we used to see more often when pillar pushes were a thing. And I don't think Santa's quite going for that, but they are trying to capitalize as much as possible on map control. Baiting out Shadow Marlock into a fight, but man, it's already too late. Santa's gotten what they wanted. They got a tower. And the more towers for yeah. them, the better. Forzum has that stacking passive. The more towers you have, the more power you get, and just keeps going. Mm hmm. Embargo is an interesting to near one. Sorry? It's going to need to be near a tower. All these all these Centauri are so damaged. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe, I, I think this is an exit. Oh, hold on. Oh, he'll, he'll definitely notice the cancel here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, that was worth a shot. I do think I'm probably overcautious when I play as just any immortal with my units because any time I take a tiny bit of like damage, the slightest boo boo, I typically send all my all my units back, <laughs> or you know like a lot of them just to yeah. heal. Which there is a lot of flexibility because overgrowth shields there. There's the chance for a unit to almost completely heal itself. And yep, once again another cancel. Interesting. Some hmm. uh, sneaky attempts by Santa. I mean. A cancel refunds most of your of your resource, so it's not really the worst thing in the world. Uh, but definitely more more early plays being attempted by Santa in this game. Mostly early map control plays is the big thing. And to be fair, Santa could take this back as they wanted to. The teapot is right there. So towers are on deck, and Santa. Oh, that's a lot of Centauri. They're definitely. Maybe not building up for a rush so much, but they definitely do want to apply that pressure. Yeah, but there's a there's a, the fight here, right? The Zentari are in the advantage, but there's also the the fight around the Pyre camp, but that's going to easily be taken by Santa. And job's done. That's all he needed. It is. Oh yeah, oh, there's man. the Santa. No. There's the Santa Claus okay. strategy. Okay, so for context, uh, if if you wouldn't mind toggling the 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 vision, right? Yep. Santa Claus is going for a sneaky foundation with Orzum and then his own turret, turret tower, right? The mm -hmm. Shadow Murloc doesn't actually see that this has been created, and you typically don't go to this part of the map, even no, if it's, it's in yours to zone. No, you like, can see it's it's dark. It no has reason. not been explored. Shadow Murloc has not looked there. Um <laughs> so so you know, like give or take 30 seconds for a couple seconds for whatever it takes, like. The moment that tower is done, uh, uh oh, because Santa Claus not only is going to be able to harass the worker line from there, but he's also got enough pyre currently in the bank to use Empire and Broken on it if he mm -hmm. really wants to protect it. And getting more on top of that, Shadow Murloc, on the other hand, looking to set up pretty quick air attack. Solid choice against the Zentari, and Zentari Turbers both. But they don't really have enough quite yet. And there, the tower shows itself. Yeah. Thrums just barely see it, but it's a little bit late. Natural expansion for Shadow Murloc is no longer. Can so, they body block everything here, though? This is the, looking the like. Units, that, whoa, what, what can they. There's a lot of damage they can deal on yeah, Santa's force. Look right at now. the hollow ground. There is actually a turret to play with. The, the units here are actually getting a slight buff if they're in that tiny sliver on the map. Oh, and yeah. Not, not only are they dealing damage, I do expect them to die, but they're dealing damage and stalling mining time. Yep. Santa Claus at the same time has their own expansion going, so this is all a win. This, <laughs> what a like response how fast, from Santa. How fast can Shadow Murloc take this back? And that's kind of come down to this blood well here, because they don't have a tower. They don't have a they don't have mass heal from In that. In the third game of our series, Dominic, this is the first time we've seen really early aggression by Santa in this fashion. Uh, honestly, the, 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 the pressure in general, like he did win the first game, but that was after a little bit of a defense, right? Like he was yep. never, he held the ball and was running it down the court by the time the game was essentially already over and in his favor. Uh, and this is what I kind of expected to see from Santa as a reply if he were to really make a statement to come back here because this is so cheesy. <laughs> like, it really is. The, it, yeah, it is. It's very Santa very risky and so effective and sort of the, the the moments of player psychology map geography remember the map counterpick here was santa claus Absolutely yep they knew brilliant. exactly what they were doing yep uh, Kevin Murloc is prepped to go for some harassment 
They don't have a lot of opportunity, though, with the Fire Stingers in place, but they know they could try. The turret, not long for this world at this It rate. did its job. It, I mean, man, that was, what, yeah. four minutes of no mining? Like, look, 72.95 versus... Like, that's... Yeah, and... Yeah, with the expansion timing, an extra 400 alloy, basically, for Santa Claus. Really well done. So that's an extra, like, fours and target. Like, that's, you know, an extra 20-ish percent on the army. Yeah, the, the, the army value, the resource that he denied there, was one of the reasons why it's worth. And, and again, like, the the sort of factor that can't be quantified is the pressure relief, right? The, the vision yep. he was able to obtain. We saw a pirate camp just taken a couple of moments ago. The ability to just force someone who's been aggressive all series to be on the back foot from an early mm -hmm. point in the game. Um, and now it's really hard to tell. I genuinely couldn't tell you who's going to win because no. it and is that's, so close. That's after Santa lost their entire army. Like, the army valuers are even, or Santa's slight advantage, after Santa lost everything. That's how right. important that mining time was. Oh, and for good measure, just take out the new expansion <laughs> as well. Oh, man. Uh, totally not a voyeur in our chat right now said it best. Santa, you funky, funky gamer. <laughs> that was an appropriate comment, given the circumstances. In my head headcanon at this point, Santa, who just, you know, brilliant, lovely guy, um, hilarious player. He's probably listening to, like, some jazz, right? Or, or some really interesting impro improvisational music so in, jazz. When, it, when he's playing. Yeah, I mean, like, jazz, <laughs> there's like, other genres, right, right? But jazz is definitely the first one. Maybe some, hmm. like, funk fusion stuff. Uh, I, I think I'm going to ask him later, privately, about, like, his yeah. choice of music while he's kicking butts like this, because this has been hilarious. Do you know I'm trying to think? Is funk fusion a type of jazz? More of a type of disc? Oh, hey. Look. Another tower oh, foundation. My. <laughs> Not enough pyre for another tower, mind you. So Santa Claus just has this ready for, you know, whenever. That. Because why not? <laughs> oh my goodness, Santa! It worked the first time. It did work the first time. Worked very well the first time, and it can work what? again the second time. What's better than one uh, tower proxy by Orzum? Two. Two tower proxies by Orzum. Uh, uh, uh. We will see if, like, I will say, fool me once. Shame on, you know, you. Fool me twice. Uh, shame on me. This yep. is kind of something that Shadow Murloc, this particular play might not expect, but credit to Santa also distracting his attention here. Mm -hmm. And the thrums were killed off. They didn't get to harass That's much. true. The, yeah, like the... the ooh, is it going to be a fight or is it just a pull? I, I think it's Santa's just a pull. Yep. Yeah, Santa's not... There's too much firepower on Santa's side. Like, if Shadow Murloc fully committed, they might have been able to turn it around, but then they would have lost everything to the Absolver. That oh, being said, that is just he's... giving Santa enough to go for this tower, yeah. not yeah. enough yeah. for like a pillar or whatever. Well, when we see the tower completed, you gotta wonder. Uh, Shadow Murloc obviously is gonna start taking some damage, right? Gonna lose some mining time. I really it hope to see range? Shadow Murloc. Not much actually. This is mainly gonna affect the ether. Do you think it wouldn't the... hit the the? It'll, it'll line? hit the furthest mode. So there's like two moats that won't be able to mine. Okay. But the other six will have no problem. Actually. Yeah, do the does how does the AI work? I'm not quite sure in terms of like Oh no, they'll just die. Like they'll they'll try so, to mine and then they'll get killed. And then new ones will get built and they'll get killed. So it's not the it's not great, but <laughs> it's not a complete yeah, loss of mining. That that is interesting, because you could technically force uh stop the automatic production of workers, yes. right? I um, think at that point they start spreading out and then you'd lose more, so you'd be down to four. I think that's how it would work. What I would definitely like to see though is a little bit of a scouting response for Shadow Murloc once the tower starts raining down chaos. Uh, because Oh, hey, baited Empire Broken. Good thinking there, Shadow Murloc. Yeah, that is good. L nice little win. Does not get at all, so it doesn't really lose any forces there. Oh, but the transistor uh, getting caught out! Both soon. of them getting caught out of position. At least one of them gets the birthing storm down, but that was all... Oh, man, Shadow Murloc's entire attack approach. Just done. Just gone. Tower has been spotted. Empire Broken is back on deck. Santa Claus... We'll see if they go for it, but it looks like they're not going to bother. He might actually commit to the fight, though. This is interesting. They've got to surround. There's no they, way to no run. Way. No, Shadow Murloc has to win this or they die. Goes for the Reign of Blood. This is this is it. If now they don't have good range here, they're down on the low no, ground. No, so they, they can't see a thing. 
Okay, Coming to find their way go. back on the high ground. The rest of the army getting wiped in the process. The Azolvers are still a bit of a threat. Shadow Murloc deciding, you know what? Nope, just gotta go for it. Take out the Azolvers fast. Everything else can wait. Two Absolvers down. One Absolver left. Shadow Murloc maintaining most of their army in the meantime. Able to escape. Most importantly, they have gotten out of there with half their army left. Santa Claus in firm control of army value, but lower in pop cap. That's the discrepancy between the effective cost, right? You might have yeah, less that units is... overall. But when you're but... dealing with upgraded mass hunters, that can be a little bit misleading. Exactly. like that. That's a really interesting thing about army value and why it's a really good metric of effective strength, even if you have less units, but they're very, very upgraded. That is a terrifying army to go up against. And Santa... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I consider this uh, the third proxy or the second and a half, but it's, once again... It's the second, it's second take two. Oh my goodness. But Shadow Merlock has behemoths now. They can just take it out. They're also going to go for the rocks? Mm, maybe, but they got behemoths. Uh, behemoths are currently pathing to the south. Well, they have behemoths. They're not using them to take care of the tower, apparently. Mm, oh well. I mean, Guess to be figure... fair, Dominic, Shadow Merlock doesn't know that he's rebuilding the tower. That's true. What The only thing That's he knows is that the, the foundation wasn't killed. Yes. They could probably assume as much, but yeah, you got a point. Well, it's certainly no now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Shadow Merlock is honestly, other than that, in a really good position. Yes. They yes. have an expansion over in the southeast as well. So they have four bases against Santa's four. Yeah, it's basically about the same. One of them is damaged, but honest or slightly. Oh no, the mining, is, the alloy is actually safe. It's just the ether. Oh wow, yeah, that's Avalon's really completely important. out of range. Okay, so that same time is Santa it? coming in oh. here. This is if Santa can take this, this game is still over. Shadow Merlock has to defend this. Already losing one behemoth, three behemoths remain. Resolver is remaining a bit of a problem. As Shadow as Shadow Merlock able to get the surround. One Absolver goes down. The Masked Hunters starting to get a little bit damaged, but. Ooh. There's the Red Harvest to maintain that pressure. All the Absolvers down. Santa Claus forced to retreat. And now that tower, it's done. Shadow Murloc. Oh, it's not done. No, Shadow Murloc doesn't even care anymore. You know what? I don't blame him. <laughs> I, I, I do. I take, it, I oh, take, do. take it at your leisure. Take it at your leisure. You know, the, the scepter is the problem. The tower? That's meh. true. That's true. The tower is hitting the Symbios directly. And... What? Empire and Broken committed on tower, which is only effectively... Wait. Okay, this is to kill the behemoth. I get it. I get it. Yep. There, there's something magical about watching um, players who go for really insane strategies. Because it it's like the, the, the line, right? That thin line between, like, madness, madness and, genius. and genius. And, you know, especially myself. No, I'm, I'm an average immortal player, I suppose. I'm not like Oh, I you going to say, especially myself. I'm an average madman. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, but yes. Uh, but but as an average player myself, it's so like crazy to see that blurred line constantly tick in the direction of genius. When like nine times out of ten, you're like, is this really gonna work? And you're like, oh my god, it worked. These guys are incredible. Well, I mean, Santa is a madman, but the thing is that he's a madman in the best way. Of true, he, he's sane enough. That you don't expect it when it, when he does a mad thing. And crucially, Dominic, we can't forget that Santa learned and teams with Magical. Yep. So Magical is total mad lad, so it completely tracks. The 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 magic juju, uh, it's there. Okay, Mass Hunters no. committing here with the offering, just a little bit. Yeah, some sniping picks. what they can before the yep. tower is reached. And we're at an interesting point of parity here, where Santa does have an effectively more valuable army. Um, however, the game is kind of even, again. I'll be completely honest, as far as yep. pressure Tech. has been relieved on both sides. Tech is, is even. Yep. The... Okay, Shadow Merlock can see this. this Shadow Merlock can see this. This, this, this is has to be madness. This, this, yeah, this is where the line crosses yeah. oh. to madness. What the heck are you doing? Wait, yeah, he definitely sees it. Wait, why is the vision so... Oh, right, because it's neutral. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the fact that <laughs> there's, like, the alloy line blocks the vision of the foundation, but the moment he can build yeah. right and have a sentinel... Uh, there's no response so far. Shadow Burlock only sees this if he actually looks. And that well, tiny... it's not clear, because it's just a gray dot in the minimap. Well, so they're not going to see it unless they start building and see a red dot in their base and wonder what's going on. Is the sentinel not within vision? I don't think so, no. Oh, no, yeah. It's not. Oh, my goodness. 
That's so tricky. That's so tricky. You funky, funky gamer. And and something to, to sort of point out throughout the entire series and all of his games, Santa Claus doesn't just make these crazy plays happen. He also puts pressure elsewhere on the map, sometimes multiple mm. areas to distract you. The, the psychological edge. Yes, technically his opponent could know the foundation is being built, but not if he's not paying attention. Like you said, it's neutral at the moment. Yeah, the front line is thing being attacked is Shadow Murloc expecting this rock formation to get hit. Doesn't get damaged, but they got they know the absolvers are here. I've got to deal with these absolvers. Trying to find a way to get in, but the castigators are making it hard because the behemoths got to take care of the absolvers, but the castigators threaten the behemoths. And the mass hunters use against the absolvers, or the castigators, but the castigators can move back to absolver cover. And this whole time, the scepter is able oh to take out goodness. the base for free. Oh my goodness. Something else to credit madness and genius for is the fact that it makes us go crazy because I have no idea how the last moments of this game are going to end up. We're at the 18 minute mark. Shadow Murloc is pushing heavy into the expansions. And we have seen not a fourth now, but a fifth proxy tower being built right now by Santa Claus. Oh, but what? Okay. What the heck? Shadow Murloc did spot the one in their base. He has Empire Broken Pyre. He has the Pyre for this play. Is he going to make it? That's not looking likely. They got to worry about their main base. They're actually getting hit pretty fight. hard. Their army getting surrounded, rooted out on top of birthing storms more birthing storms dropping into the behemoths able to get their damage in thrones up for Sh santa claus are not enough to save it as shadow murloc oh. just forcing everything back no it's a really pyrrhic victory if that though at this point dominic the behemoths have all been taken down absolver they have up. one it's throne remaining but more reinforcements are closer for murloc now they're coming in it's a second pass for shadow murloc they have the birthing storm still available and it's paying off it is. It is paying off. It's the behemoths spades. have free reign. There's no more castigators. Uh, there is a couple of Zephyr which do have anti-air capability. And at this point, the behemoths have shot out all the Keedle, essentially. One more go before oh. they die. Yep. But at that point, you're losing maybe even another behemoth. And I, I do want to take a look at the other turret for these tower foundations because I can't help but think, oh, yes! This one's done. It's still what? alive! It's still what? alive! Oh, the behemoth's it's... expired! Oh, it's no longer mining, this... so it's no longer defending, so it's no longer, it's not going to oh, stop this. Oh my goodness, this oh, is my God. crazy! That was what Santa was waiting for. This is crazy. And now Santa going for yet another base. Shadow Murloc just getting bled out base by base. You were right, that victory was Pyrrhic, and oh, man. it's just not paying off. Santa Claus has more bases, stronger army, more of an army, and more pyre at this point. Uh, God, that throne shot. absolver, that, sorry, that castigator, <laughs> that castigator absolver combination just, at this point, like, pulling Shadow Murloc into an awkward position, trying to take it out in order to save this base. And Santa Claus never broke these rocks, by the way, that, <laughs> that never like happened. Oh my goodness. It, it, but all that time, just putting Shadow Murloc on this awkward position where they weren't quite sure what to do. And Santa is, Claus having full control of the tempo. You know, this has been so dramatic. If we pitched it as a film, they would say it is unrealistic. And it's back! And it's back. <laughs> That's six! 20 minutes, six proxy towers. Six! Oh, and the one in the main base is gone at least, but... <laughs> it's like, what of it though? Goodness gracious. Just get rid of the foundation, for God's sake. Yeah, like, okay, all it takes like, is a scout or a sentinel to rebuild on, it. Like, or at least build your own at this point. No, Santa's not even going to bother. They've got enough pyre for... No, they might. They get the ancient. They'll have, like, 350 pyre. No, we have seen pyre. six they have tower pillars. foundations built as proxies yeah. so far. Or, sorry, six towers. More than... Less foundations, more towers. Um, yep. I think we, at this rate, we might see more. Anything could really happen, but... but oh, I mean... 420 pyre... That is the GG, the Fires of Victory in favor of Santa Claus, an epic series. My god. And Santa Claus moving on, Chatham Murloc to the loser's bracket. Whew. All right, well, well played, Chatham Murloc. You put up a hell of a fight. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, man. What a day, what a tournament it's been so far, and can you believe we have many more matches to go? That I can crazy. believe that, and also, but I don't know if I don't know if I can believe whether or not Shellonge is working. That that's you know, uh, it is a good thing to believe. And be I haven't a clue. And not... <laughs> it's it's refreshing, but it's not letting me actually yeah, report some, scores. Submissions of scores have been has been down for the past X minutes, so I have just been doing right. manually. Uh, right. What that so means... we should have hydraulics and Santa Claus. Yeah. So hydraulics and Santa Claus, and what is the winner's final now? Um, if you are watching the stream, thank you very much, and, and folks who who 
are trying to know what your upcoming matches and loser bracket. Give me a couple of seconds to, to make sure I know where those are, and yeah. we'll be good. Well, to go. we'll we'll get we'll get it. So I don't know what map we're starting on though, because that is going to be up to Santa Claus. All right, hydraulics and Santa. This is man. If if Santa and Shadow Murloc is wild, this is going to be an absolute trip. Like yeah, this this is going to be a fun one. This is a like. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm excited to see what is going to happen here. Remind and everyone that was only winner semifinals. We're on winners finals, still have losers finals, grand finals, and possibly losers semis, depending on how that goes. I don't know what the bra current numbers are for the losers side of the bracket. So Do you have updated? yeah, losers semis is currently going to be uh, best of one between Shadow Murloc and YJ Zhao. Uh, and then, of course, losers winners. Semi? Yes, losers semis. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then winners finals uh, is what we will be watching right now with Santa and Hydraulics. Oh, does don't Shadow Marlock and Scrope go at it? In oh, the I'm. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, well, uh, not a boy won the match, then dropped out. So Shadow yeah. Marlock proceeded past them. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. 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 Yeah. All right. So Santa versus Hydraulics. Th these are two very storied players. Uh, Hydraulics, um, I mean, in recent times, he's been playing a little bit more, I think, and I've seen him stream a little bit more, but I would definitely say there was a time where he was our most experienced as well as prolific content creator. Mm -hmm. um, and he did not really take a have sabbatical. He was very busy with studies, but he did play less, right? Santa has definitely yep. been playing more, much more in tournaments recently, especially. Um, but Hydraulics is no slouch, so I'm really curious to see how these two match up here. This is the first 1v1 tournament Hydraulics has entered in the Alpha. Wait. Yeah, you're... I have no records for them in anything other than 2v2 you're right. tournaments. Like, because, yeah, he, he's typically more of a 2v2 player. Uh, Usually playing with Magical, actually. That's crazy to think about, actually. Which, ironically, is also, like, one of, I, or one of uh, Santa Claus's <laughs> most common partners. So, so, let's see. Yeah, which of them learned best? <laughs> I mean... I do think Santa Claus just has the advantage from having played a lot more 1v1 lately. But I've yeah. gone this far. They beat everyone up to this point, and that includes Flicky. Yeah, well done there. Flicky, definitely an experienced player in his own right. Um, I mean, talk to me about these mortal picks. Double Orzum? Really? Double Orzum again. Okay, so Frontiers as a map has generally been considered to be advantage Croth because of how much... Okay. how much space there is to fly and how hard it is. Like, there's a lot of oh. dead space areas you can take advantage of, and Karoth end game is air. Mm -hmm. So, late game, Karoth does really well. Mid game, Karoth does okay because they, does reasonable because they have harassment, though Aru can contest that. Mm -hmm. And overall, that has made Frontiers at least kind of popularly seen as a Karoth favored map, though I, I the amount of people, times people play Aru make me think that that's not seen as totally true. Still, I'm not surprised the players are going for both double Orzum, or okay. Orzum each. Now, both on the same Immortal picks, obviously yep. the play styles can differ vastly, and they can differ, you know, between game to game. Remember, guys, this is a best of three series. Yes. Uh, I want to ask you the question, Dominic. Who do we expect to be the aggressor here, right? Judging by the openers, Hydraulics. Santa Claus going for very quick tech. Okay. And very quick, very, very quick expansion. Hydraulics, I mean, it's ether, double ether units, then expansion. Like, they are they are focusing very heavily on getting an army out. Probably mm -hmm. Mass, Zephyr, Mass Zephyr, considering they're not building anything until the monastery is done. Yeah, that, that is interesting, right? The, you can oh, go they already have a bunch all... of Zentari as it is. So, sorry, a bunch of Zentari now, and they'll probably go for a bunch of Zephyr once the monastery is finished. Okay. That's been a reasonably common approach. Mm-hmm. Zephyr are such a good unit. I mean, they have the tag of Generalist for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. They have upgrades, not only passive upgrades to their range, but they can blink with their wind step. They can shoot up. They can shoot to the side. They can shoot down. I mean, well, I mean, like, to, they're not yeah, really I, in the air, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if like, we ever had a unit there's that only caused two divisions. units... If, if any unit were to cause other units to go into the sky temporarily, they would be able to shoot down. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's actually a really interesting concept. Dark design time. I mean, that's uh, that's the Protoss Phoenix. I did not play the Protoss faction uh, other oh. than one game ever in my StarCraft career. I am a diehard Zerg. Fair enough. For the queen. Yep. Actually, I've seen it in a couple. It, it's 
that that's the one that people are gonna know. But I have seen it in other games as well. That concept. Mm. So uh, across the map, we see a little bit of worker on teapot action and a little bit of harass here from hydraulics. Actually, maybe he tried to get the army down here, whittle down that tower a little bit. I don't know if he can commit just because towers are incredibly healthy. Uh, but right now, the micro yeah. from both players, nothing has died. No, no, it's uh, it's changed a bit. Hydraulics managed to get some kills in there. Bit of a pyrrhic victory, but hey, the damage is being done at that tower. Uh, wow. There's yeah. that harm broken. Santa Claus is just barely getting enough fire to get that going. Last entire does he get out alive? He does. Oh, they and do. And done. now hydraulics can apply pressure from their firebase. This is going to be interesting, though, because this base being built very early, there has been an aggressive tower by Hydraulics, actually. Uh, not as crazy or zany as last game series, but the pressure, you know, taking a page out of Santa's book, in a way, by mm -hmm. putting a tower past the uh, the quote-unquote line of scrimmage, right? The, the center point in the map. It'll make mm -hmm. it a little bit harder for him to defend in case Santa tries to siege there, but it also means that he has a outpost and a pretty clear shot at that base. Which, it's worth noting, Santa Claus does have an extra expansion over Hydraulics. Right. Like, Hydraulics so, it does have is on a bit of a clock to take this out, or at least stop it from mining. Yeah, I don't think and, this is the way you get there, though. <laughs> Just by... With the reinforcements coming in, Hydraulics does at least have a chance to keep Santa on their toes. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you expect maybe some Absolver tech? Because I feel like that'd be pretty strong from... I, mean... I normally would, but with that Angelarium built up, I'm actually not okay. sure what Hydraulics is going for. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the tower is so close to the base itself that... Yes, Hydraulics is very close. Yes, he has the tower to heal and protect, but it's hard to threaten that. And you got to remember, too, the Empire and Broken is castable to cover both the tower and mm -hmm. the Acropolis here. Yeah, there is no breaking that without burning through Santa's fire reserves. Which, it's like, the Hydraulics trying to do that would just get themselves killed. Yeah. But at the same time, hey, this is Orzim versus Orzim, so good luck Santa Claus getting through Hydraulics' defenses. Yep. Some dervish going across the center of the screen here. Well, is Santa going to be able to make anything, any plays with that? I'm not entirely sure. Zephyr typically are not as fast as Dervish, obviously, but they can chase pretty well with a wind step, so... Not to mention, if they get in a fight with the Dervish, they win. Yeah, for sure. It, it does depend on timing here, and it seems like the two Dervish have sneaked in. So now the question is, how fast does Hydraulics respond? Yeah, do they get their most to attack? And no, they do. They do indeed. I uh, lost half of them already. Yeah, it's just this is... buying some time in a way. That was effective for Santa, I would say. I, I mean, yeah. he cleared half the moat line. The Dervish the now line. do need to back away. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple still alive. The Dervish do die, but that was a lot of damage and definitely a good stall, preventing Hydraulics from getting an advantage here. And uh, well, we'll see now. I mean, uh, see, I'm reluctant to say that because Hydraulics is enough for a tower and well, they yeah, have yeah. advantage and they're dropping and, the Pillar of the Heavens. And that's... that's the problem, yeah. I guess was that it was a good way to stall hydraulics but hydraulics already had a good army so oh yeah they were they you stall them sure but they're already so far up on, high in the sky that they're not going to crash right now let's see they're the going to recover no here. problem empire and broken empire is broken. available empire broken's not coming up nope no no well, that's hydraulics a really good take oh the chase here but hydraulics has a tower to heal to and the magi in front as well Santa Claus did not go for Magi. There's no easy way for Hydraulics to defend this base anymore. They have the Absolver, and that's it. A critical it's... question, I suppose, was Empire and Broken on cooldown for Santa Claus? Because he had the Pyre, it... right? 50. Yeah, they did, but they might not have gone for it. Yeah, that's curious. I mean, he essentially was rebuilding the tower now, which I'm that's... very curious. Yeah. Maybe he just didn't believe it, it would be effective, right? It, would, it wouldn't do anything at that point in time because it had already taken too much damage. Yeah, that's true. That's a possibility. Okay, the micro here. Really good micro, actually, with the wind steps back. Drolix. Just gotta hold, hold that tower funny. position. <laughs> Just like, uh, I don't... No, you can't get the pyre. You get the... Oh, it's a oh, minor, no, right? Hydraulics got it! Yeah, but... Yes, yeah, Hydraulics got once, a little bit off that, so why not? Effective one second. I, I suppose you get a little bit on the on the take, right? But it's, yeah. Compared to the actual pyre camp camp, uh, a bit of a nothing burger, but very funny. Does stop Santa Claus from holding it, though. I mean, neither one would be able to hold it, but still. 
Ooh, this is going risky. for the snipe. Snipe to Absolver and wind steps away. Mm, solid choice. Well done. Hydraulic's clearly just waiting on getting enough for another another pillar of the heavens. They're yep. so close yep. to it. It'll be like five seconds. Oh no, they're not. Okay. Drops a tower somewhere. Interesting. Maybe protecting his bases. Because at this point, his harass has been very effective. And I want to yeah. point something out. That uh, hydraulics. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's clever. That is a spot that hasn't been scouted yet. And again, that's sort of closer to Santa territory. But he doesn't know yet. And if that turret, the tower is able to build, that's really strong. Same time, uh, though. Santa's going for that tech. Hydraulics, they could hmm. potentially shift into air. They're just focusing so much on, hall, on Legion Hall units. Uh, not really... They, they're going to fall behind when it comes to being able to... Like, the Absolver's already starting to be a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Scepters aren't the problem, but Thrones will be. Yeah. So, something I want to point out that we've seen so far in this first game from Hydraulics, which we really haven't seen too much of today, is his micro so far has been fantastic. His win steps have been really well executed, and he's winning basically off of a mass Zephyr army and just taking good fights, smart fights, and then win stepping back at the appropriate moments. Um, you can't sort of sustain that for an entire game. We we would probably expect some higher level tech eventually down the line, but so far it's been working out for him. That's the thing, though, is that when does that turn around? Santa right. Claus on track to take <laughs> this ancient, no problem. Santa yeah, Claus will have pillar on deck when they do. Push pull. Then... Hydraulics is trying to stall it. He's it's not taken just yet. It's not, but that's you know at the cost of. There's now Dervish going back into his back line. There's... Uh-oh. Yeah. Mm, there it is. There's the take. Santa Claus focusing more on towers, however, so the very least that's saving grace is that mm, Santa Claus, they want towers and tower foundations way more than they want Pillar of the Heavens. That is there a go, right very there. interesting sequence. Foundation set up, and uh, crucially, that, that lower tower on the left side sort of the uh, middle position was noticed by Santa Claus below. Huge fight around the Miner once again, but this is a massive army of Zephyr. I do not think Santa Claus has the numbers to sustain it. That being said, though, he's pushing it back. The Absolvers putting in so much work here, Dom. They are, but they're getting sniped oh. by the wind step. And there is the pillar just to add insult to injury after the fight is over. Drop the pillar. Oh, the Absolvers actually did not go down quickly enough. Hydraulic's losing quite a... Oh. They're also able low. to take through, but Santa was able to take out quite a lot in the process. The match are going to have their work cut out for them, trying to heal them. The Empire and Broken on top of this tower. But the Pillar gives the buff as well as Hallowed Grounds. Still, Hydraulics recognizing this might be too risky of a play, and he doesn't want to commit to it. Back and forth, but really good from Santa Claus not to lose with that Pillar there. And simultaneously, we have Santa Claus attempt with Dervish. Not actually going anywhere. Hydraulics able to defend with... No losses, and it should be worth noting, this tower that you mentioned was, like, way past the midline. Still up. Still yep, fine. It's, Hydraulics it's still is making up. good use of it. Oh, absolutely. And and you gotta give credit to the fact that, you know, Santa Claus has been trying to fight around that area. He just hasn't been able to take it. And look at that. Committing with the Empire and Broken to protect the other early tower. And something it enables from Hydraulics now is we saw that base at the 3 o'clock position. Um, it's almost like an investment, right? Early in the mm -hmm. game. And now it is going to not only pay off, like, at the same equity, but even more. Yeah, because, again, they, they have that. They still have a couple of safe bases they haven't taken yet. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this with Shadow Murloc as well. It seems like the strategy may be against Santa Claus. Go for these riskier bases to then make more map control at the start. And Ooh. then box them in. Solvers go down. Halloran is still up, but they aren't going to last much longer. Wind step on the back lines. Wow. Santa Claus losing every or hydraulics, taking out everything. Santa Claus able to kind of box hydraulics in, but hydraulics doesn't care. Yeah, th this is a really interesting switch up from the unit comps. We saw Santa Claus go for Halloran, which I'm I want to ask you about because I recognize the Halloran plus Centauri combination is amazing because you give them the hollow yep. ground and the bonus range. But yep. I felt that Absolvers might actually be good enough to handle Hydraulics' army. Mm, it, it's hard to against the Zephyrs. Mm. It's just because they can windstep everyone and snipe things out really quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's true of Hallowers as well. Absolvers, if you have enough of them, it would work. But 
it's getting enough of them is a bit of a problem. And Howlers do give you a lot more flexibility for, like, taking out towers, which against Orism is critical. Yep, this is a very important tower gone down, but survived for quite a long time. At the cost of a base? Yeah, that's, that's a, all. Not, a, not an easy trade to make. The base so far hasn't taken any fire, but the units, the workers, I should say, of course, have all gone down already. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot that can last there, and on top of that, ether's, yep. ether is gone. And Santa's going to need that. They are, you know, they have thrones on the way. They need all the ether they can get if they want to maintain the throne production. Actually, tech production in general. Hallowers, wow. Zolvers, thrones, all ether heavy units. Did we just see the Empire Unbroken committal there? We did, yeah, I think so. This is interesting. Hydraulics is continuing the pressure. Look on the right side of the map as well. The units here dancing around the outside. Man, the, that is such a clever combination, though. This is brilliant Orzum play. Whenever you can, set up a foundation and a tower next to your base. Because not only will Empire Unbroken enable the tower to be much more effective, right? More damage. Of course, the tankiness is just awesome. Yeah, the Acropolis is invincible. So a little bit closer to parity at this point. Hydraulics has his army going down here. Maybe even committed, actually. The tower taken as well. Is Another committed though? For a tower, this... I think so. I think we're at the point where Mass Zephyr is falling down. Is just not able to keep up. It's starting to fall off. Yeah. Thrones into Zephyr. I mean, it, it obviously depends on your, your support, right? Your your spells, how many of each unit you have. But... What spells? This is all <laughs> hall units. There's only The only spell they have is deploy to heal. And hollowed ground, that's it. Yeah, There's, that's fair. I, I mean, wind step, step, but yeah. <laughs> Ooh, and, and the overall DPS on something like the Ancient, Zephyrus cannot contest this. No. And that's where it's going to become a major issue, is that there's just... What, like, you don't have anything for anti-air. You they potentially could, but you don't. Cast gears are on the way. But with only, like, a couple of production structures... In fact... Hydraulics right now, they have... Do we see an six, There's eight, one, right? One there's total? one. I'm just counting out how many production... They only have... their supply blocks, actually. They oh. only have 128 supply cap total, or population cap total. You're right. They've actually wow. been pop capped most of this game. That is definitely an adjustment to make for my hydraulics. And at this point, Santa Claus is in control. There's, there's no more crazy four turrets right no more crazy well, I mean, there I mean, is, okay, but it's not one attempt is, yeah <laughs> and, and the and the the overwhelming army force at this moment for santa claus means that the pressure is completely off of him right yep he can move around the map how he sees fit can easily take that tower if he wants to and hydraulics needs to come up with a response We'll see whether he commits to continue to respond to the zephyr with a couple of castigators uh, i'm not sure if that's going to be enough Judging by the the House of the Fading Saints, gosh, that might be cast to get a range. Yeah, I, I think that, that would be the big one, right? Because, oh, here we go. Well, it gets rid of a throne, if nothing else. And he does have some static defense littered across the map. He really invested in that quite early, actually, the, the structure to enable that. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it fares here. Ooh. Oh, nice. Wind step to snipe one throne. Second throne is more, better protected. In danger, Sandler though. Should be able to... Oh, the swords! Swords and on strike. Santa Claus doing significant damage in Hydraulics' force. That's just cracking this base wide open. Hydraulics has the nice concave, but do they have the damage density to make it count? And not enough to save the base as Santa Claus oh. wiping it off the map and Hydraulics getting boxed into this Pillar corner. might come in. Pillar just get uh, online for Hydraulics. Here we go. Last ditch effort. Pillar onto the Hallowers. One of them goes down. And that leaves the Zephyrs with a bit of a buff. The remaining Zephyrs, at least. Trying their best to deal with this. Not doing a bad job, actually. Takes out a Sharu, takes out a few Howlers. So it's a. It's at oh least. It's goodness. equalizing things out. It's. <laughs> you no, know, go back to the chess thing. People talk. You know, it's mentioned sometimes that when you're in an awkward position, it's best to try to simplify the game. Reduce I, as many pieces yeah. as there are on the board. And, and that, that's that exactly what Hydraulics has done. 100%. I, I want to mention the fact that I genuinely think that fight. I mean, obviously, you can always optimize Micro, but Micro had a huge deal to play in that fight because the pillar itself, when it lands on enemy units as it did in that fight, the pillar does damage based off the damage it deals. Or it yes. takes damage, excuse me. Well, it loses health. Yes, you can see the pillar. The <laughs> it pillar, deals damage based on the damage deals. Well, the, the as most things do. <laughs> at 25% HP, when it lands, I genuinely wonder, had Santa Claus committed to killing the pillar, maybe he would have 
more of a leg in that fight. But as it turns out, it, it was, like you mentioned, like essentially even, however, still well done by Santa for taking that base. That's, that is the bigger win. Hydraulics now running four bases. One of them is almost mined out. Santa, on the other hand, has five, six bases. And yeah, one's almost mined out, but the other six are fine. Or the mm. other four, the other five, they're fine. They're, there's no problems. And man, Hydraulics is stuck to his guns. He is still... Uh, Not Zephyr all day. Zephyr focused, yep, by far. He's had a couple of support units, obviously. Zantari early has had a number of Magi, Cascaders as well. But he is committed to Zephyr gameplay. They do have they do have Shara on the way. Which, given how many Absolvers have been built up by Santa Claus, Shara is a great choice. Shara yeah. will deal with Absolvers. Like I, I completely agree with that pick. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about is there's only one Angelarium. Yeah, and yeah, that matter, the fact... It's not a lot of production structures in general. So we haven't like, seen Santa Claus really push too hard so far, but look at the damage, or excuse me, the, the army supply, the, the pop cap overall, the army value. Yeah. If Santa Claus just runs it down, which he's starting to do, in the next couple of moments, Hydraulics has no way to counter. No, and Santa has Pillar on deck. Like, Santa, yes. Santa can just Huge do whatever they want. Ooh, oh, and this, his own. Santa with the surround. Hydraulics able to take out a Sharu, but not much else. Luckily for them, gets the escape. This is this is looking dire for Hydraulics. This is, yep, 100%. Half the army size, less than half the army value. Unable to really keep up in tech. And starting to, and falling behind in expansions as well. Map control is clearly in Santa Claus's favor, who's just gotten another pillar of to their name and this is such so, a funny thing to see 410 pyre for, for santa like orzum in this kind of a lead right just snowballs the hell out they just of drop a pillar right now if they wanted to honestly they, yeah they drop another pillar for cool no, don't even just, have to yeah yeah, like, yeah there it is okay so i think dark design when you have more than 400 pi, your opponent automatically loses. Because <laughs> that's the second game in a row yeah, I mean, where that's happened. What One day, Dominic, I, I hope it's going to be sooner rather than later. We're going to be able to, like, data analytics, right? Um, yep. And, and I would hesitate to guess if the amount of games so far in the history of Mortal Games game, Mortal Games of Pyre, uh, Immortal Gates of Pyre, that we've maybe had, like, no more than five games where someone with 400 pi or more loses. Uh, I'd I'd be shocked if they're even five not games. tournament. No, yeah, four hundred pyre is an insane lead. Yeah, casually, yes, casually, I see that all the time. Yeah, yeah. but no, when tournament games are oh, I, no. have we seen a single instance of that ever? Four hundred pyre and losing, maybe in two v two. Really? In no, the thing is, it's, it's really more of an Orzum thing anyway. Every other every other immortal yeah, has yeah. much better ways to spend pyre early, but Orzum, the only option they have is build towers or Empire and Broken. If they're on the uh, offense, they have nothing they can do. The way you unless you have two hundred. You mentioned, like, that would be kind of a funny design concept, dark design. If you have, like, excessive amounts of pyre, you get, like, a mega pillar. Right? Like, 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 like you get a mega pillar by combining Empire Broken with the with the, with the spell well, pillar. That well, you anyway. do. Yeah, you, you but, do that. like, that, that happens. <laughs> what about a mega, mega pillar? You mean, like, just a giant pillar that shows up in the middle of the map that covers the entire map? And I don't know, ground? man. Like, there's an interesting... Con I, I, I'm not a, on the design team, so this is complete dark design just for fun. Yep. But it is kind of interesting if you have an excessive, like, duplicate or triplicate amount of pyre, cast the same spell, but with a ridiculous bonus. That sounds kind of fun oh, yeah. to me. Yeah, the EX spells. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> just add more, more fighting game. I mean, I guess technically card games have EX to it. That would be pretty interesting. The only card game I've seen the... that has EX moves is Exceed, which is a fighting game card game. Well, Pokemon has EX Pokemon. And it has Is that EX... something where you play two of the same Pokemon to get a stronger version? Uh, no, but I I'm not going to go. There's multiple EXs, actually. There's three. There's EX lowercase, EX capital case, and then EX lowercase, the new generation. But Okay. Uh, and they are different variations of Pokemon that function very differently. But and they're I, not. But they're not. Doubles. They're not like. They're not like doubles, right? Like. Okay, because the way it works in Exceed is that literally you have well, each card represents a move, and if you mm -hmm. play two cards of the same move, you get a stronger version of it. Okay. So it's the exact same concept. Uh, so we are going to be getting into the next match in just a little bit of a moment. Uh, it looks like it is going to be the Canyon pick, yep. so we'll have to 
shell of the EX conversation. Although I, I do wonder, like Twitch chat, maybe you guys want to chime in on this. Why do games have like why is EX a thing? Is it just stand for extra, I suppose? I think so. Um, I don't know. I mean it's it's one of those things where again it comes down to these are developed as games by people from English is not the first language. And so mm, you get interesting true. uses of you get is idiosyncratic yeah, 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 uses true. of English in the in the way it's done. And then that that becomes part of the, the overall like lexicon. Yeah. Oh man. There's so then some, it becomes uh, normal uses of English. There are some graphic tees with bad words. Is all I'm gonna say that are, that are really yes. funny because yes, if you go to Japan, you don't know. You, uh, it's best if you're an English speaker who goes to Japan. Just understand that English is not most Japanese people's first language. So if you see shirts that have swear words on them or whatever, it's not meant for any offense. It's it's much. It has a much lighter meaning there than it does here. All right. We are into game number two of the winner's finals. Santa Claus having just won that grueling 20 plus minute match. So if he wins this one, he is in the grand finals with a one game advantage. And starting out already with fast expansion while hydraulics going for... Okay, that's... There's no ether. There's no ether. Hydraulics, you're expanding on this? No, that's just, that's just Legion Hall? Okay, well... It's early Legion Hall for Hydraulics. Where's the second one? Where's the Zephyrs? Where, or the Zentari, rather? What's... Hydraulics didn't crash, did they? No, they didn't. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> just just double-checking, because this one of those... It, it's been known to happen. It it's literally happened happen. early today, but you guys didn't see it, yep. because we're production wizards. Well, it actually did yeah, happen once today that you did watch. Well, uh, anyway, at the end of the game, yeah. Yeah, but it's happened more of, than like, once. Fatal errors. But considering it's break the game weekly, it's, it's actually happened a lot. We've we'd, we'd hide like all. It's just we've we've been making it just this smooth it's, it's professional experience. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, speaking of professionals, what is your professional analysis here of this opener from both sides? Well, I mean, it's fairly similar. Hydraulics will be able to get a little more pyre, which. Mm -hmm. At it, you know, it might snowball depending on how they work with the towers. Honestly, it's going to come down to the mid game. Like well, this, these are—they're both playing for mid game, so I guess that's keep an eye out for where they, they go from here. Whether they have attack more units. Dominic, take, kind of take it from the top. Uh, the counter pick map choice was hydraulics on canyon, and or it was Morgan. yes. What, what, what do you? What's the reasoning behind that? Like, actually, I don't think I've seen much Orzum on canyon. Yeah, like we were talking about how it's pretty strong, right? Uh, the Karate it faction can... is strong in Frontiers uh, for sure. Yes. Canyon is not seen that way as mm. much. Okay. This is actually kind of surprising. Normally on Canyon, we would see a lot more Aru play. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to rack my brain. It's like, I mean, yeah, you could. There's a lot of room to start placing towers and close off choke points. Mm -hmm. I mean, Orzum might just be slept on in this map, to be perfectly honest. I think Orzum's been slept on in general. Sure. Pretty excited to see how this plays out because both players are playing Orzum. We might be able to see what's going on. I'd be curious to see what happens as we get into Grand Finals if we do see more Orzum play from either of these players because one of them's going to Grand Finals. Yep. Possibly both. At least one's going to Grand Finals. I am curious if they'll continue to play Orzum, and if we see Orzum against Aru, for instance, or against Ajari, even, if we continue to see Orzum, and how they do. I think something to note about Canyon, at least in the context of today's history, uh, Canyon is not a map that allows for as many sneaky proxy proxy tower opportunities, which is something we saw earlier from Santa Claus. Yeah, there's no way to proxy tower. There's a ways there are ways to proxy bill. Like there's some little like areas yeah, that are yeah, high ground that you could stick a Angelarium or something, but there's no real place to just stick a tower foundation. It just doesn't exist. All the bases all the bases are either on the high ground or the low ground is close enough that you'd see a tower. Mm -hmm. Like th there's this area here right above the fourth, but that expansion usually takes a while to get, and that's right inside your opponent's main base, they'd see it. <laughs> by teapot uh, we hardly knew you we hardly drank you <laughs> oh crap it's gonna have tea oh well and get after the series or no i meant to get my before i started so my voice would be warmer but yeah honestly oh, i keep forgetting to warm my voice before these anyway that's been a <laughs> bit of a mistake of mine actually yeah i mean it, it is such a pleasure right to watch these tournaments go very long 
and it it's long. It's it's yeah. a lot of effort. Well, I mean, but, I, yeah. the the players themselves, I cannot imagine what it's like, right? Especially for some of the folks that are European or different time zone, where you might be playing into the wee hours of the day. It, yep. Like there's there's this entire it's element what? of competition where midnight now, in most of Europe. Yeah, somewhere around there, right? Or or getting there. But like the, I do think something that's really interesting, in the past even ten years. Uh, mm -hmm. For players who play video games online in a sort of ranked setting, the ranked ladder where you choose to queue is very different than a tournament setting. Because if that tournament takes more than two hours, which most tournaments will, there is an element of stamina and exhaustion that is completely separate from your individual game skill. Yep. And you, you can and, build that skill, yeah. but it, it is tough. It's just, there's... It it really feel like when people say tournament life, they mean it. Like it's because that's kind of how it feels. Yep. Like you're trying to stay alive in this. With ranked, yeah, you can play for hours, but you're just playing whatever. In tournament, if you lose twice, you're out of the tournament. And, and if you win, congratulations, you've got more hours of gameplay to go. Yeah. <laughs> if you win, well, now you just got. You might be able to do more, or you might just lose because now you're in a much stronger player. Because now you're a player who's statistically probably twice as strong as the last player you fought the, the more we're On talking average. about this out loud the more i'm thinking about man this, this is like even more gruel there's like it's such a layer of gruelingness oh like yeah no because you're you're fighting every time you every time you win in a tournament you're now showing that you're at least as good as the ha remaining half of the players left or the remaining half of the players mm. so every every time we'll get about twice as hard on average Whereas that's the thing with ranked is that you're te you're typically fighting people around your skill level, and, and you can literally drop out at it or like you 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 play your game right, you finish your match yep. and you leave right. Yep. If, if you if you're tired, if you're tilted, if whatever, it's bedtime. Um, maybe yep. you need to ask for a little, a few more minutes or one more game. But but the option to quit compared to a tournament where I mean, yes, technically you can drop out of a you tournament, you could, yeah. But, but, but if there's money lot. involved, there's pride involved, right? You've already been playing for hours, um, and you don't just have tournaments like that. It's not like you leave the tournament and a couple hours later you go, oh, I want to play that tournament again. No, right. you left the tournament. It's over. Yep. <laughs> it's tournaments done. are, are they occur when tournaments occur, right? And if a tournament doesn't occur, then either yep. host your own or play, I don't know, friendlies or ranked. Like Exactly. In this case, we definitely have friendlies going on all the time, but we do not have a ranked mode, right? The, it's, it's We're still in alpha. It's still very early in development. Oh, no, this is pickup Discord game, which yep. is fine. But this is, that's where we're at. So uh, Santa, Santa with the scepters, as yeah, always. Th this is this is interesting though because Zephyr are not an anti-air, but they do have anti-air capability. A single attack here, I don't think is going to do too much from this. There's only one Zephyr, two Zephyrs being produced. That scepter will get some damage in before it gets sniped. Ooh, and of course Santa being Santa, they're always going to be attacking from multiple fronts. I want to point out too, look how many towers have actually been set up by hydraulics. Potential of a proxy is not really possible here, but he's got another one building there. Yeah, he's literally got all four. Wait a sec, he has all four. That's cool. Oh, they do. Oh, that. yeah. That's not even those aren't even neutral foundations. That's just the map. That's so cool, actually. That's like uh I don't know. I, I've never seen that before, at least in tournament gameplay like this. Well, you don't see a lot of Orsums in tournament play. This is optimal play for Orsum. Especially not on this map. It's all, it's no. all connected. <laughs> Which is like, this. Like, I'm not surprised in a way because there are a lot of wide open sp spaces. Setting up more towers is no problem. Mm. And especially when you start getting into, well, Hallowers and such, and they want to have that space to escape from. It's no problem. So it does seem as if the Zephyr, or excuse me, the Scepter attack was, for, for a couple of moments at least, denied... Uh, oh, it's still denied. Oh, it's, yeah, it's not goodbye. happening. Goodbye. It's not happening. R.I.P. <laughs> it's <laughs> Wait, oh, only, it's uh -huh. only on the mercy of the fact that Hydraulics hasn't built a single Sentinel. Yeah, true. And those Zephyr actually at the on the lower ground could not actually shoot him. That's really funny. The I, I assume Sorry, it's too much dead space. The, yeah, exactly. The dead space, right? That's really funny, actually. Hydraulics? Where are... Okay, so Santa... Is again going for tech. Hydraulics is the last time their their reluctance to go for tech was their downfall. Hey, it's a sentinel! They do have a sentinel. Okay, okay. there we go. 
And they do have two Angelaria as well, which means they could go for tech far more efficiently than they did last game. I think they've learned their lesson. Yeah, and, and he, as we mentioned before, the, the, has this four turret set up, the four towers across the map in the center. Uh, means yep. that hydraulics uh, can get around the map pretty quickly, pretty safely. He doesn't, doesn't have, have like, like pyre every two seconds. Yeah, true. Like he, he isn't he isn't much faster, right? But he's building that pyre resource at a higher rate, and he has fallbacks, sort of checkpoints all across the map, where their effective army strength might be somewhat equal, but hydraulics does have map control for sure. They have map control for now. It's Santa Claus. If they can bait Hydraulics into a bad fight, Santa Claus can just just walk around and take it back. And Santa Claus kind of knows where Hydraulics is, what they're up to. Mm -hmm. They've been building up for a little while into at least the yeah, Scepters on deck they have, or uh, available, they have Absolver Tech as well. Just the question of can they get that set up? They cannot seem to catch Hydraulics in a fight. That's the mass set for army power. How do you catch that in a fight? Like you got to get him in a corner, and on Canyon, there's not really any corners. Their skill is literally called Wind Step. How do you catch the winds? Uh, you don't. I was got to say in a bottle, but. But then there's wind outside of it. Oh yeah. I guess you can go to the vacuum of space. Yeah. That's what you got to do. <laughs> All right. We, we need a, We did a. We're we're Empire Earth now. We need an entirely new <laughs> terrain that's not. Uh, water, but instead the vacuum space. Oh, hold on. Big fight in the center field here. Hydraulics pushing in. Has to be careful. Santa Claus must absolvers deployed. Cannot be assaulted. And Hydraulics knows it. Hydraulics trying to find that timing where Santa Claus comes in. Doesn't want to engage too many damage units. Too much of a distinction in overall tech. Hydraulics does see they're not set up. Tower isn't up yet. Hydraulics could go for it. Everything's healed up now. Once again, the Absolvers deploy. Hydraulics being careful at their approach, but sniping where they can. Same time, though, they're losing a lot in the back line. Sentinels are helping. Yeah. Uh, but, Santa Claus? Mm -hmm. That I don't think is going to work as effectively in this situation oh, as we've oh, seen in the past. Oh, it will. It's going to make mining much harder. I think it blocks mining Oh, my mining God. From that you're node. right. Okay, so they, they, can the workers attack it, though? Oh, oh. GG oh. called. Okay. Oh, he might have missed something earlier, uh, but I will say that was quite a call there. Maybe just a wind condition from Santa, you know, Hydraulics recognizing that he doesn't have the ability to mine as efficiently. He's not going to win it, but wow. Maybe. That was a little unexpected. Um, I'm not going to lie. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, the GG's GG. So GG. Santa Claus moving on to the grand finals in the winner side. Hydraulics will be Yep. on the... Losers, well, in the losers finals, and then the winner of that will come in and go. Oof. We are into the grand finals. Why yep. chase now against Santa Claus? You might be a little confused. We were supposed yep. to have the losers finals. Indeed, we were, so... but Hydraulics has decided they don't want, they were going to forfeit. Nope. So therefore, yeah. so they have forfeited. Hydraulics wasn't able to continue. Uh, we just saw a pretty close game between him and Santa. Um, and yeah, the, the setup now is going to be grand finals with the winner side advantage over to Santa. Uh, and he's going to be playing against YJ Zhao, which is going to be a pretty interesting showdown. I don't actually know uh, if we have seen this. I'm sure we've seen it in previous tournaments, right? Um, but we haven't seen it today. Sure. I think we've seen it in, like, winner semis or something, but not as a grand finals match. Yeah, so this is pretty exciting, especially, uh, you know, just the banger games we've had, honestly. I think the out of the last, like, five games four of them or something like that have gone to like the, the, the 20 minute mark or at least the 15 plus that's yeah actually we've had some really close games I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see just like 2-0 for Santa or 3-0 I guess because it starts with one but yeah so let's make sure everyone is in the lobby Santa of course the higher seed here uh I mean I guess the question I can ask you as far as expectation I do think Santa Claus will be playing the Orzum uh, and you'd be correct and yeah, it was, YJ Zhao has also been known as an or, as an Orzum player. Hasn't they played were. as often lately, though. So that's the thing. They had been an Orzum player, but YJ Zhao, the one thing that I have noticed they are, is they're a mono player. Mm. They, they pick a main they the want one, to focus on, and they pick with that. Okay. And stick with that. So they were an Orzum player for a while, and then they shifted to Zul, and have been a Zul player since. 
But yeah, Santa Claus going for Orzum. This is exactly what I was talking about in the last game. I'm curious to see what happens Orzum versus non-Orzum mm -hmm. on Canyon. Yep. What and strategy is Santa's going again, for? Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the grand final. So it is a... In this position, because we are running a double elimination, but we want to be courteous of players' time, uh, if you're on the winner side of the bracket, you have a one-game advantage uh, yep. in this or best of five. Or you only need to win two games. I... Represented by only having requiring two wins. Yeah, exactly. And the not two three wins. So let's see now. YJ Zhao, how does his work cut out for him? It's hard enough to take one game off of Santa, uh, let alone three. And so far, it's clear that YJ Zhao is confident they can hold the mid game. Like they're doing exactly the kind of mid game opening you'd expect. Same with Santa Claus. In fact, this is basically the same general strategic concept. Everyone's going for relatively safe build for game one. Yeah, it's actually pretty funny how, how we've seen similarities across each of these series the past couple games. Uh, Legion Hall, Legion Hall, obviously the X-Pac we talked about, and then a lot of Bone Stalkers. Now, I, I do feel overall today, we've seen a couple of Zol games. I don't think she's done so well. And I actually am not sure if Canyon is a great map for Zul, so I'm really curious to see what YJJ pulls out of his hat. I, as am I, because honestly, I think Canyon has a lot of untapped potential for Zol. Zol depends a lot okay. on hit and run attacks, especially for Bone Stalkers. Mm. And Canyon provides plenty of room to get off the beaten path and hide and then pop back into an attack. Okay. Of course, doing that is hard, but I think that Canyon does provide a lot of potential for making that happen. Yeah, that that is a really good counter, actually. I feel... I don't know. Like it, it's interesting because the main route, right? It's a little, it's a little bit of a snake, a little bit of yep. an S, but it, but it is pretty linear. Um, but as you mentioned, there are a lot of hidden different areas. And ooh, this is gonna be interesting. First pyre camp being contested. This is a camp, not a miner, so you have to pick up the pyre as well. And uh oh, no, oh, that's the real fight. <laughs> Santa Claus yeah. doesn't want to let that go. I think this is an opportunity for YJ Zhao, but nope, Santa back in. Oh yeah, he, he okay. He does finish off the tiny little ah. Uh, Santa's gonna take it. Santa, Santa is gonna yep. take it. Yep. But can why just punish them? I mean, they gotta get rid of one of the Zephyrs, but that's basically even between the two. One Zephyr for yeah. two Bone Stalkers. Yeah, I mean the the Bone Stalkers. Centauri are so much tankier than Bone Stalkers. Centauri no Zephyrs. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Centauri is so much tankier than Bone Stalkers, and typically they struggle if they're getting kited out uh, without their bonus range off of the Hallowed Ground, but. In that case, the number advantage, there weren't enough Bone Stalkers to overwhelm the Zentari. Uh, when we do see Wai Zhizhou not only losing at the pirate fight, but, you know, not really able to punish the units either. That being said, looking for his own pirate camp there, and he does at the moment have more army value. Although this early in the game, uh, army value is not really crazy important unless it's a huge discrepancy. Because as soon as, you know, Santa gets a couple more units, he'll... Start oh, to yeah. equalize that more. Yeah, it really is more a question of where this guy attacking, if they deal with damage to the economy, if they're able to... Even winning a fight isn't as big of a deal yet, but taking out a base, that's a lot. Even taking out some production structures, that is still a lot. Mm -hmm. Santa Claus already going for a quick third expansion. YJ Zhao, on the other hand, is continuing to... Oh, wait, what are they doing? They're, they're up upgrades. upgrading, yep, upgrading yep. to the Godard here. And I will say something about YJ Zhao. I do think they're a very strong player. They obviously ran through a hell of a bracket today, uh, taking game wins off of Jack Attack against Flicky. Oh, oh one second. The Zentari here. That. Oh, Zol committed, actually. Interesting. Well, YJ Zhao does have spare pyre. Oh, does get a single kill escape? so far. Is that enough? Not it a single kill actually, so far yes. for Zol. Oh, that Literally was not one. an escape route. Wow, no, I, yeah, I don't know about trophies. that. Yeah, I something I, I was gonna say about Wiser Zhao is is we have seen him, or at least in my experience, I've seen him be uh, an Orzum player at first, obviously, and even though he's now flexing onto different roles as a mono Zolmate, it seems I haven't seen him be particularly aggressive historically. Um, yeah. I'm not suggesting that he cannot play aggressively. However, I, I do think that Wai Zhao is more comfortable when he's able to build up his defense. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is, is in this case, it's tricky as Santa Claus has only really shown signs of weakness when he's being pushed back. So basically, both of them are 
like YJ Zhao, if they spin that into an attack, will be able to catch Santa on the back foot, but they're unlikely to do that. Exactly. Like, like it, it is definitely not something that we've seen commonly from YJ Zhao in tournament play. Um, so that'd be a different element of his game that would be very impressive. And maybe, maybe he can win like with his regular style, right? Maybe he doesn't apply too much pressure and, and is able to slowly amass the macro lead. We've seen games like that one before, but against Santa, who is, oh man, if you if you give no, this guy Santa an inch, he'll leads. take the mile. You yeah, will just Santa do whatever takes he wants. tech leads. Yep. Santa takes whatever positional advantage they can take. It really is. If you can get them up that sixty-four supply timing push, that's ideal. If you can't, then this, you're going to be struggling. Yeah, it's going to be tough. So uh, we'll see now. A sizable army has been amassed by Santa Claus and just roaming around together. Wise Zhao has a bit of a counter, but the most of his army is in the southern region. It has not made it here. These are the callers just free. Oh, they got, what, a dervish? Uh, whatever mm -hmm. it was, it was not worth it. And nope. I mean, the, the reinforcements are coming, but I don't even think after that Zakal dies in the north. It Yeah, this is a really awkward fight for Wise Zhao. Oh, boy. Well, they got the catch. They actually oh, might Zol get... Here. Okay, Zol is starting to get some kills now. And this is well quite the surround the as well. Why does that... <laughs> does lose the pyre, but does take out the rest of Santa's army here. Yep. All of these Zol kills. Okay, perfect. That was really good. Good. Yeah, making up for the lack of Zol kills in that first in that bottom left corner. Santa was uh, smelling blood in the water, but really walked right into a trap. Well done by Wai Zhao. That's Zol. Makes yeah, you walk true. into a trap and then punishes it for it. Yeah. And, that, and that's, I guess, a, a different flavor, a different sort of way to win, a key to win here for Wai Zhao, because mm -hmm. we've not seen Santa um, be put in trap situations. We've seen him lose to, to pressure. Uh, and, and I guess the first pop quiz that Wai Zhao presented to Santa Claus, Santa Claus failed, right? That was definitely in his advantage. We'll see if that continues to be the case. Now, Dervish run by from Santa. Just the one here. <laughs> That's what I was talking about before. Yep. W yeah, well workers answered. beat that. Workers do beat that. And a good body block, too. Very impressively done. Why is Zhao is, man, one of the players that, that has been around for a while, but only came back a couple of months and has been on the grind. And Dominic, it is really showing here. And having seen them week week after week, this it has been consistent improvement. It's not just, like, it just to give the right impression here, this is this yeah, is a pattern of not constant a fluke. improvement. Yep. That being said, though, still up against the Santa Claus, and he's got that and looking at the game right now, so central fight going on. The Absolver has been sieged, and we can actually see the spellcast there. I don't actually think that the... Uh, I'm not sure who took too much damage there, but looking at the overall number value for both players, pop cap and army value is about the same. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of parity once again, as both major armies are here on the center of the map. Vision, on the other hand, definitely in Santa's favor. And it's starting to get a fair bit more territory as well, Towers. Yep. All Which things come back to Orzum's territory. All <laughs> things come back to Orzum's territory. You might think your territory is not Orzum's. However, you would be wrong. And that's... I I also hesitate to... to yes, why is it actually the advantage? They're kind of starting uh, to fall behind here. So, so yeah, like that's the thing, right? I think that in a straight-up fight right now between those two armies we just saw on the screen, he would lose. Oh, uh, we might actually see that tested. Oh, it's down to the... Oh, the Red Seers go down first! Oh, if they had survived! Maybe, but at this point, he is just full retreat mode. This is bad for YJ Zhao. Yeah, oh, they can at least cancel the expansion, the first expansion, the second expansion, however. Not so lucky. Going on the back, oh. snap out the Magi. Looks nice to the... Are they going to snap the Absolvers? Why does that come to the... Yo, they're committing hard. This is a huge commitment. Zol is going to have a nice linear shot here, but the defense from Orzum... Oh, look at that wind stepping, trying to close her out. Uh, that does Zizel. split out the separates from the rest of the army, which means the calls have a field day. Dominic, but honestly, there's reinforcements it's just too on the way much. It's for just Orzum. too much. Yeah. Yeah. Halwar's coming in here, and that is nowhere. That is nothing Wajizao can really deal with right now. Losing most of their army in the process. Santa gets free reign over everything. Gets one base for free. Doesn't even get canceled. Gets two Ooh, bases. Oh man, that is brutal. What is that? 400 alloy gone. 800, well, 800 alloy. 400 alloy. Per. And, and the and the yep. And the symbiotes are going to go down. I mean, there's a couple of units remaining for YJZ right now. He is floating a decent chunk of alloy, so his army is going to be able to be rebuilt fairly quickly. But 
The damage being dealt on his basis right now is just ludicrous from Santa Claus. No, it's this is this is a massive blow, and Santa has four bases. Like, why does that needed that a lot? Those alive to stay even? Mm. They don't have it. It's it is advantage Santa Claus. Yeah. So, Why does that at least does have red seers? So they can start getting some blood plagues on. They could potentially get this evened out. Dropping that being a few. said, uh, what about these thrones coming in from Santa? I mean, the, the red seers getting a couple of kills is great, but and in reality, the the army value and overall pop count well, is the same. But, oh, the see, throne the is a danger. Thrones is that they Hold on. They're rootable. Wait, this you is actually really bad for Santa and now. And that could be a major Whoa. swing. It's Why Jay Zhao got, got a throne? Has a what? significant army value advantage, taking out tower. This is a complete swing. Oh my god, I'm never well gonna played. sleep on a Red Seers again. Holy, like, yeah, I know. And, oh, and the, the throne at the end was beautifully done there. That was icing on the cake. Yeah, that was also, I, I genuinely think there might have been some overconfidence from Santa Claus in that position there because he just took the base. The other base was very low and he had a sizable army, but the understanding of the army composition from YJ Zhao putting in work there coming through taking back that fight getting the throne at the end there on top of that and now he's looking for more he's looking for the ancient and they will find it there's no contest from Santa Claus needing to rebuild their army Santa Claus simply cannot push against this ancient now YJ Zhao question is are all those kills enough to get great hunt if they want to go from the first place I, I, I do think we're close because YJ Zhao has had not one, but at least two very effective Zol fights. We might have been like, uh, I, I, it's what? It's level five, right? And, and for, for context, Zol as a quote unquote temporary hero gets empowered abilities per the amount of kills she gets. And then she also at level five unlocks her ultimate ability. Yeah, I think it's like Great 30 Hunt. supply worth of kills is what you need to get that. We're level. very close if we're not already there. Oh, the blades. Choo. Getting dodged. Yeah, he did lose one, but very well done. Yep, and they've taken up the tower as well. So YJ's out. Not much to worry about there. And oh, there here it we is. Go. Great hunt. Uh -oh, and better run, the thrones. Route. One down. Yeah. The other two, force escape, split for the rest of the army. More importantly, split from the rest of the army. Everything else can't mm -hmm. deal with this. The Howlers can't even see what's coming, so they can't help with their range. And Zola's only basically depleted about half her time. Fortunately, that the Thrones had the the high ground, the barrier there, but oh, they're still in his sights. Oh boy, yeah. No, why just now spotted all of that? Still, a few more Thrones coming in here as the as Great Hunt finishes. YJ Zhao's got to be careful. Santa Claus, having the economic advantage, was able to rebuild much faster. Yep. And now, once again, is a threat. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, just with the pace of this game... <laughs> oh! Oh, no, boy! That's the funniest okay, thing. That's, that's uh, it's going to uh, be quite the shift in supply and army value there in a sec, if that goes out well. Oh, why just got to be careful, though. They can't lose their force in the meantime. This is... Uh, gotta, no, boy, don't, don't be too cocky. Well, the Red Plague is doing a reasonable job. The Red Sears are still alive, actually. This seems like some tactical uh, supply depletion by Wai Zhao. <clears throat> well, AKA feeding his army. Work? Yeah, this is a tactical supply depletion <laughs> of their own, unfortunately. Here we go! Still, <laughs> that's two thrones down. That's all Last throne gone yep. and getting rid of the T-Pop for good measures. So the stealth is just going to be able to do its thing. And I was kind of memeing with the tactical uh, supply depletion, but he's got over a thousand alloy. Multiple times we've seen these players just wait. And then rebuild. You can do that. <laughs> so and they have the deep nest too. So behemoths are on the table. Yeah, true. And oh. the whether that is going to be in time, however, Santa Claus yeah. coming in for what may be the death blow. He puts it on the foundation again. Oh my goodness, Santa Claus does not quit. No, they do not. A couple of units have already been rebuilt, but for now, YJ Zhao doesn't have all of his army just there. I do not think this expansion is going to be savable, but he's going to try. And that's us. Oh, oh my. Empire broken on a call. building oh, yeah, there it is. tower. And he does actually manage to get the defense. Well done still, but the pressure is on and uh, <laughs> the tower now healed nearly to full. On top of the fact that the rest of Santa's army has arrived... And YJ Zhao, they've burned through their float. They've got a couple Red Seers that have a lot of to call, we, which is not bad. For, can we look at the main for a second? I think there's a throne in the base. Yeah. Oh, there's there been is. A throne the there is. Time, by the way. That's where it went. 
That's evil. <laughs> oh my Under goodness, Santa Claus. Again. Amazing, amazing, amazing play all day from Santa, just con consistently multi-pronging his attack. Yeah, now it's six bases for Santa Claus compared to the... Well, seven bases from Santa Claus compared to two from YJ Zhao. And one of them was most recently harassed by a very large angry angel, so not at, not at full capacity. Yeah, it's well, still being yes, harassed they're... by that anger agent. Oh yeah, no, it's just that's it's no no end in sight. Orzum's like, no, this place is mine. This territory is mine. It's true. It all belongs to Orzum. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, in this situation, you do want to try and expand, but of course, Santa knows the way to counter an expansion I mean, is to scout for the expansion. Yeah, not to mention, like, you do want to sc expand. You also want to build an army. Exactly. Yes, like, you kind like, of want to have everything. And have Pyre, yeah, they, you do want it all. But unfortunately, all according to Orzum. Yeah, well, this may be lost. Santa just needs to go up, up a hill. And if they can go up a hill, <laughs> game's over. There we have been some hill. steep hills in my time, but yeah, the, the hill has been crossed. By the way, you see a bunch of Magi on the screen here, so a huge amount of healing to this army, and Santa certainly putting the finishing blows here on this game. Zol has been summoned. She is high level, which makes her very strong. But one Zol against this army, I don't think it's going to work out. That's oh, that gonna be it. That's going to be it. Yeah, a valiant effort from YJ Zhao, but they still have another game. Yeah, they're 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 tenacious, if nothing else, and they are trying to keep it going. But there we go. After about 18 minutes, Santa Claus takes the game, puts him at a 2-0 lead in this grand final. Quite a strong showing there by Santa Claus. The next question, of course, is what what comes next? Oh, that is the second time you've inadvertently triggered the the musical Hamilton in my mind tonight. Uh, or today, I should say. Oh, okay. What comes I'm next? Sorry. No, I no, that's that is that is, that, show. that is not a problem, Dominic. If you haven't seen uh no spoilers, the Americans win the revolution. Ah, damn it. I just spoiled it. Uh, well, but very, very good. Of 1812. <laughs> Would recommend it. Map counterpick seems to be once again Canyon. And that's actually pretty yep. interesting because we saw Domination. Well, I don't know if Domination is the right word. The early game from YG was actually pretty good and he did have the one effective trap. Um, mm -hmm. Over time, though, we did see Santa just kind of amass a lead. But I, I do think that if you're confident and you're YG out here, you you're going to Canyon again. And, and if you make a couple of dis different decisions and then you micro a little bit more effectively, you can still win this for sure. So here we go. It looks like the players are ready, so we should be getting into the game in just a moment. Uh, what is now match point, life point, tournament, tournament point. point. The opportunity here for Santa to emphatically win the 34, 34th break the game alpha. Can you imagine we've been at 34 in the alpha already? That's... Man, that is, I mean, you've been here for, what, 90% of, of them, so, like... Yep. No, yeah. more than all of it, actually. I think I started, I started in pre-alpha, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for, for, I don't know, it's probably at least, what, 50 tournaments for you? Yep. Like, because we, I, I think we almost ended at 60 in the pre-alpha phase. And here we go, another one potentially in the books, or Wai Zhao trying to claw his way back. He would have three games to win in a row against Santa Claus. Game on. Okay, YJ Zhao is confident that a fast expand will be the right way to go. As is, And Santa's just, I mean, they're figure, hey, I'm a stronger player, I can just go for the macro game. Worked last time, worked this time. Yeah, it really did. The the advantages we saw from YJ Zhao came from tricky Zolt plays, so that is something that I imagine if you're Santa right now, you're considering a little bit more um, as to not give your opponent a foothold in the match. That being said, though, I do wonder, like, the the seer play from YG Zhao in game one was really effective. Uh, I I wonder if there's a little bit of an over reliance on the use of Zol. That is kind of a trap you can fall into with any type Why, of yeah. pseudo hero unit, right? Yeah. YG Zhao does that a lot. They're, um, they're, they're very much. Oh, that's Zol something that as... you've seen before. Interesting. Oh, all the time, all the time. Okay, okay. And no, YG Zhao will use Zol as a unit in any, in any fight that seems relevant. Like Zol is super strong. Don't get me wrong. Um, however. In general, putting all your eggs in one basket presents a huge risk. That is a thing that I've noticed because 
Zul, of course, has two main combat abilities. They have, well, summoning Zul, and mm -hmm. they have hunting grounds. The yep. little thing where a little spot pops up in the map, and then after about 12 seconds, it becomes a place where your units can hide and then deal a bunch of damage. I think it's double damage, double or triple damage when they yep. come out of it. And we don't, I don't recall seeing YJ Zhao use hunting grounds, while other players who play Zul will favor hunting grounds. Oh, yeah. YJ Zhao rather uniquely favors using Zul herself. Yeah, it is interesting because the the option there, the player differences, like enable different styles of play. But in this case, you're right. Maybe the ambushing, stealthing your units, setting up those traps is something that uh, YJ Zhao well, would want to explore a little bit more. It's, I mean, the thing is, the reason I think YJ Zhao might benefit from exploring that is actually because YJ Zhao tends to play very defensively. As you mentioned in the last game, yeah, yeah, they for go sure. for that very safe type of approach, which is where Hunting Ground shines. The problem for hunting grounds is when you're trying to be aggressive, it's difficult to set up because your opponent can just shoot it down and stop you from using it. Mm -hmm. Zol, on the other hand, is great on offense. Mm -hmm. So I figure, I figure if Wajis out is either more aggressive or shifts to hunting grounds for the more defensive play as a preparation move, that will that'll be a more effective way of playing the game. Yeah, that's a great point. But it's just, um, it feels like a mismatch between the ability and the style of play. That being said, this is exactly where Zol is useful. Yep, early aggression here from the Bone Stalkers. At least forcing these workers away for now. And something to note too is... Uh, so Bone Stalkers are a pretty interesting unit in comparison to the mainstay vanguards uh, like the Zentari, right? Or even Sapari and then Hunters. Um, mm -hmm. They like to sneak, right? They want to be ambush. Like they want to stealth themselves and then get that empowered bonus auto attack on their reveal. I I don't think we'll see it this game, I'll be honest, but I am curious I... in Zol's kit about the Whitewood Reaper. Uh, yeah. I so we haven't seen that's that's a weird one because we you can't have the bonus damage on stealth until you can also have the Whitewood Reaper. They both require the red veil. So and, and like yeah. Again, like I don't I think it fits the, the player profiles right now, but I do think that's, that's just like just on the topic of Zol, right? Maybe mm -hmm. part of her kit that I do think they're quite expensive and they, and they are kind of high risk, high reward, but that's the kit, right? Like that's a, a lot of the way it mm -hmm. functions. Um, and that would be interesting to see whether people uh, try to use that because I I am still of the opinion if you're playing Aru for sort of Zakal front to back sort of head on team fights, Mala will typically find the advantage there. Um, yep. Yeah, if you want, yep. yeah, like straight up fights go for Mala. If you want sneaky stuff, go for Zol. The Sakala just completely caught out here, kind of unfortunate because he does want to take the fight, but they weren't all together. So Santa Claus is getting kills for free. <laughs> oh, Oof. half the army's gone down so far. YJ yeah. Zhao cannot well, like they're it's like they're trying to take this, trying to group. No, you cannot take this. This fight is lost. This fight is lost. Oh, Sol Zol though, actually. Interesting. I'm, Not yeah, gonna that, get much out I, of this. Yeah, I, again, this is what I mean. Like, summoning Zol on defense is just not as effective as hunting grounds. If you're gonna, if you're, if you are gonna spend pyre, I do think you get a couple kills. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's kind of curious there. Santa Claus doesn't get anything for killing Zol, so I don't actually think he could have just waited for the time duration to to fall out. But mm -hmm. maybe like a power move, right? I don't even care if you get one or two kills to build up your trophy system. Uh, I'm just gonna kill you. As for I mean, a lot of the call coming out soon. That is a that is a counter absolver move. That's perfectly mm -hmm. sensible. Like that's pretty much the only thing they have out of the altar yeah. that <laughs> is like, <laughs> that is going to work. Like, other unless, and I mean to be fair, YJ out does have the ability to build a couple bone canopies. Like they could get a bone canopy or two, use thrums, have that. But even against six absolvers, thrums are not going to be quick enough, mm. and are not going to stop it. Not Ooh, that the this timing. is going to work out well either. Oh, this is unlucky. That base is dead. YJ ah, Zhao got out of it... position at just the wrong time. They are going to be able to get some run-bys of their own, deal some damage, but it's not the same as taking an entire base. We see the commitment, actually, from Santa here. Oh, man, this is going to be a lot of damage. The base is still alive. Oh, it is. YJ Zhao is... saving at the last second. It'll wow. get the back line damage on top of that. Complete turnaround. YJ Zhao wiping out Santa's army and able to take out... With no losses, an entire alloy line. Dominic, I'm wondering there if that was pure greed or if that was just too much multitasking for Santa Claus as he did not deploy the Absolvers and then he deployed them to fight 
when he was outnumbered and didn't successfully kill the expansion. Uh, yes, the Ikra have been distracting, but they actually haven't wrecked too much havoc. Like, there, there's a couple of... They hadn't at the time. Yeah, like, this... That was a really good blow for YJ's out here. That's... Uh, they needed that to stay in the game. Like, if they had lost this base, it would have been over. And I thought it was. Like, I was looking at it going, okay, this is... This is over, right? And... No, I just know, held it. I'll bring it to Godheart, too, just to keep it alive that much longer. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. The... Well, actually, now is looking... Red yep, Red Veil's up. A little bit of aggression from the movement on the map here. A ton of Zakal, and of course, as we just saw, Zakal very strong against Absolvers. The question is, what is the response going to be? Santa Claus, obviously, he's going to know that Absolvers mm -hmm. aren't going to be a great matchup here. And it looks like he's building more to Zephyr, some Zentari on the way, and of course, at least one Angelarium on the board... All the right response. Yep. Zephyrs do well against the call, and well, obviously they can't. The call can't shoot up. This is textbook. Like Santa, if you want to know how to deal with mass the call, Santa's Santa's on the right track. Credit to YJ Zhao keeping track of those timers. It's something that's really important. Obviously, the the camps, right? The fire camps and miners across the map. Uh, they spawn after what? I think two minutes, a couple minutes, and uh, I believe so. Yeah. It is something that you need to track, right? You need to keep track of. And unfortunately, he's going to lose his Zakal for this, but he's also attacking with the rest of his Zakal on this expansion. More importantly, can oh, they get smart. some production structures? This is really smart. The Empire and Broken yeah, just go to the main. Exactly. There's nothing nothing in the way. You might as well just take out as much alloy line as you can. It, is that, that Acropolis is, there is of, down? Is there a threat of lethal here? No, 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 no. The Acropolis in the, main, in the natural is fine. Yeah, but... If he just walks it back, is there enough to defend? Oh, you're right. I, I don't think White so, is going like, for that. Yeah, yeah. But okay. you're right. White is out could get lethal if they went back to the natural expansion right now. And Santa Claus isn't setting him to build. Uh, White is out much more focused on the economy. That's a base trade, but White is out is spending so much time hitting tech structures when they need to just go for the Acropolis. Like, they just need to go for that one kill. No, nope, Santa's got too many reinforcements. It's over. Pillar, and Santa pillar. The pillar in the main base. Wait, Santa can push this. Wallet, though. This is not a strong army from Santa. Most of his forces are dead. I do think Sol was summoned because Pyre was used by Wise's out. And, and he went for not the main bases, but like you said, so much to the production structure. So at this point, I, I almost imagine oh, Santa no. Claus is going to be like population, like supply blocked, right? They are going to be supply. Well, they're going to struggle, but they're not supply it. blocked. 64, or they have 80 cap. Okay, okay. And they're going to have 96 in a sec. They're, oh, yeah, they're yeah, fine they're, they're for chilling. population. And Wise's out has zero army value right now. Oh, None. That was got... so close. If they had, if they had just walked it back, gone for the natural Acropolis, and just suicided into Whoa. it, that okay. would have been game. The fight of this pillar is still breaking out, though. One absolver dies, and the <laughs> the anti air here as well. Oh, does manage to how survive. Why is that definitely... still alive? I. How is everyone still like? How is there a single unit? Oh, he summoned Exol to kill the freaking scepter. I do not know if that's worth, but God, if it isn't badass. <laughs> I mean, it's only by fire to take out a... Well, the unit that actually would have just killed his base, so, yeah. Mm. Now, yeah, that, that being said, YJ Zhao has somehow managed to get an adva a significant advantage. Like, they just uh, took out Santa's main. Santa's Dominic, trying to build a main. They I'm only gonna... have the one thing there. They have economy on uh, their side. They have army on their side. They have tech on their side? I'm only going to counter with, I'm not sure if it's a significant advantage. It is an advantage, but I'm only going to counter with, it's it's a sizable one, not a huge one. Because that's the fair. moment that's we fair. say that, we're going to cast our curse and it's going to flip the other way. That is how these You're games right. are gone, Dominic. We can't, this we, game like, in particular. Yeah, it's just so back and forth. And of course, Santa did have a decent amount of bank, right? To, to, oh. to build some units. He's going to lose a couple of Zentari, but I mean, it's not great to lose units for free, but one Zentari is not the end of the world. And, and yeah. slowly Actually, they're already starting to equalize. I'm starting to think that Santa, if they'd gone for more Zep Zephyrs, that would have been a solid choice, but the Absolvers do kind of get countered by Zakals because Zakals just last long enough to kill them. Mm. Sears to back him up as well. Mm hmm. And a little bit of a run by on. Oh, why just right setting up for Great Hunt? Yeah, set up for Great Hunt, but there's a little bit of attack here from Dervish. But of course, why just We saw this before. He had the static defense there. This is wasted cash and wasted time by Santa. Well, if I mean, it's scouting and something else. They know exactly what why just up to. I suppose. If they can get the Dervish out of there, that'll be totally worth it. Actually. Yeah, I mean. Oh, not even going for that. Just taking out what they can. 
and, and meanwhile, all of that for, for the Ancient, like, you do get the vision, mm -hmm. right? And you maybe get a worker or two there, but in general, uh, Wise is out, is in control. He's stopped the uh, offensive sort of push from Santa Claus, and ironically, Zol is not super strong. We talked about Zol before. She's not going to be super yep. strong in the late game when the army size is huge. But if the army size of both players at a late game point is low, and Zol is really, really leveled up, she will destroy the opponent. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be why she's a strategy. Just keep the army sizes too low to bat. Oh, hey! Would you look at that? Undergrounds, just in case. But yeah, keep the army sizes too low to matter. If, if they stick to that... Collecting more pyre? Could be the way out. Something about the pyre, too. Obviously, not only are you oh, getting more said, pyre... Why just that is supply blocked? They actually are pop-gapped. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. Worth, worth noting. Their population cap. Santa Claus still has quite a bit of headroom. Yeah, so All definitely a moment... 96 cap, actually. You'd expect that Wai Zhao uses the next couple minutes to, to attack that, right? He, he's got plenty of pyre to summon Zol. Yeah. He's got a strong army. He's, he's capped as well, right? Um, you don't want to intentionally just destroy units to to save, like to, to open no, up. No, they, they've they've gotten but, another supply structure, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, it's it's at the, with the money they have, it's at the point where it's like they're they are going to be able to remax reasonably well from a from mm. from even empiric victory. Okay, so this can be interesting. Uh, we see a scepter harassing the main base, and of course, the dervish. The dervish are here to distract, I think, more than anything, uh, because yeah, they leave the colics open. That, that's I was about to say a colic more. Ooh, this guy got an extra dimension spice here, which is crazy because it's already been so spicy so far. I don't think two stalkers win this. No, they do not. No, but they do buy time. Other stuff can be built and... Or more stalkers, I guess. Just, yeah, more stalkers. That's really all you have. Okay. Be, okay, so, but now we're at the point where bone stalkers do get bonus damage off yep. of coming out of stealth. Assuming they stay in stealth when they actually attack, but we have that. We got that point. We could see what wood reapers. I don't think we will, but yeah. what we were talking about earlier. Ooh. Now is the time. Now is the time we were talking about. Scepter still unanswered, and the Akalic, such a powerful siege tool, is going to be really pivotal in this fight. How many attacks can they get off? No, good question. Here we go. Both targets kind of went a little bit too far in front. Is it going to? How long is it going to last? The calls. Holding the line. Watch is out. Able to keep Santa Claus at bay. Santa Claus forced to retreat out of here. The Acolix, YJ Zell, just making full use of them to keep Santa Claus on their toes. Okay. Now YJ Zell into the choke point, Santa Claus holding them back. The once again, YJ Zell's Acolix. Yeah, and the, the Hallowed Ground got to make them more effective, but there's so much threat. Ooh, the Empire Unbroken, very effective on both the base and the tower. YJ out needs to be careful not to bite off more than he can chew. Most of his front line has been eviscerated so far, and only a couple of Acolix are remaining. Oh, hey, the Dervish. Oh, they come what a back. trap. Nice body block there. The Dervish probably going to die, but they have slowed down the retreat. And then take the Acolyx. That's, oh. Oh, once again, it's this awkward situation. But then why just out? They're floating so much. They can easily get back all their army. Yeah, it's funny because especially in, in Immortal compared to a game like StarCraft, maybe, uh, floating is typically not something you expect to see at a high level of StarCraft play. However, with the way units are produced in Immortal, it is sometimes okay to be over a thousand resource, right? Like a thousand ally, either to remax your army fairly quickly and get back into the fight. Sometimes I wouldn't. Not yet. Generally, like, like it's the the problem is that if you lose more than half your army, then you don't. Yeah, it, it's definitely like, like yeah, you can't rebuild that fast. It is one of those core tenets of RTS, right? You don't want to float too much. Mm -hmm. Um, and in Immortal, I do see the there are exceptions more commonly in this game compared to some of the other major uh, games. Um, but obviously, like you said, right, if you're floating too much, that means you're actually not being effective. You're not being efficient with yeah. the money you have. Because you can only build about a little over half of your actual population cap at once. Mm -hmm. So you have to build in two cycles yep. if you're fully remaxing, which yep. means you're going to be behind if you do float and you lose all your army. Ooh, a spicy way to make the spicy game even hotter. The Ancient has been started, but it's being contested, and the flank is coming in. And with the flank comes a lot more roots than anything else. No red plagues. Just trying to root out the Magi to stop them from healing. 
Yeah, it looks like they're trying to get the uh, roots, or trying to stop the healing, like you said, but also, Santa's kind of split here. He's got a couple of Zolbers on the fight, and then a couple of Zolbers on the Ancients, and look at that, the Concave, just for a moment from why she's out. Reinforcements from both sides coming in. This is a close fight, Dom. The Dervish getting rooted out. Why is taking full advantage to split the army, wipe out the Dervish, and neutralize that threat completely, leaving the Ancient wide open. Santa Claus cannot hold this. I don't know, man. It's Santa they want, Claus. They want to find this a way back in, but quit. it's he just how are they going to find that? Yeah. They do not quit. You're right. But what is, the problem is that it doesn't matter. Yeah, mathematically, I can't help but think that YJ should be able to secure this. But look at that. Reinforcements are trickling in one, two, three, four at a time. But both of these players are saying, you know what? That's enough for me. Let's boogie. YJ is currently 75%. He's almost taken the Ancient. But once again, Santa is trying to contest. Just barely holding on. And once again, he starts it himself. And the damage density is just high enough. It's it's even. YJ Zhao can easily hold this. Dropping Zol just to provide that extra little bit of damage in the back lines. Going Ooh. for all the Zolvers, but the Dervish body blocking everything. Zol's now down. YJ Zhao losing their army in the process. Santa Claus will be able to oh. take that Ancient. And with that, well, it's going to be above 400 oh. fire again. I, I mean, hold on. It's not done yet. There's oh, it's not done yet. You're right. This, this is not from done YJ yet. Zhao. The Bringing push, it back pull, in push, them. Push, pull back again. They like Eminem. Why is Zhao with this a call? Realizing that he doesn't want to fight the oh, maybe he's going for the Zolvers here. Go too soon. Now those Hallowers once again are oh, a bunch of Hallower versus a call. Hallower wins. Not if there's a bajillion to call though. Well, that depends on whether the Hallowers can be reached. Oh. And okay. the answer is not in time. Not in time. <laughs> Meanwhile, the ancient. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, what's up? I'm Wait, you, want, you want to fight? No, no. Okay. Yeah, it's like, 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 are you guys trying to fight each other or be it? It's very unclear here. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, okay, Santa no. Claus looks like they got it on lock. I mean, why yeah, is that forced to rebuild yeah, everything? Yeah, and not, they aren't floating anymore. They're actually, and they're, they're falling the behind. Yep, yep. No, they have 100%. no more Bastion income. Their main's almost mined out. They have no third. Okay. Like, why does uh, early advantage was entirely an uh, early advantage dependent on this? early aggression? Wait, but wait, there's more. Wait, the throw just died to the ancient, and the ancient is still actually alive. I do think Santa's gonna get it. No, Santa's yeah. gonna get it. Santa's okay. got it. It's there. Oh my goodness. Uh, does he take the fight? And now, in another 40 seconds, there will be another ancient. <laughs> the fight right. never the, ends. The way, the way the spawns work right now, right? Wait, yeah. what the heck? Are you serious right now? Santa Claus is the forward tech structures? Jesus. Okay, is that just... is just a flex. I, I mean, it's a flex on us. I mean, th to be fair, an observer can Wait, only show there... the one screen where was at a there... time. The... They had a... Uh, what? Where did their monastery of Izer go? Oh, they must have... Wait, no, they couldn't... Did they attack it? Because they have one here, I mean... but they can't... Oh, yeah. They, they must have had a monastery before. Oh, oh, maybe they lost it during the... Yeah, I, I think they push pushed earlier. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that makes sense. Okay. Holy moly! Like the entire time, a a ancient fight there. H five part two. We're back. Uh, I just want to point out before we get into this, the multitasking of Santa is insane because he was building all these proxy base or proxy structures. Yep. And yeah, we're we're, we're back into it. Aerox trying to connect here with the throne. Don't do so I'm, actually. No, they went for the dam the damage on the ground units. In fact. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, enough pyre available for the summons, and, and definitely for pillar. Pillar one. Wait, where'd pillar one go? Because it wasn't used in the front line. Hmm? It wasn't used in the ancient. Yeah, ancient fights are just gonna continue. We'll find out later. Uh, I think it's probably just important to take a look here. The ancient fight is right. still going on. <laughs> it's like, I mean, on the other hand, like, it hasn't been taken yet, but there's quite a number of kills around this this screen. This center screen we're looking at has hundreds and hundreds of unit deaths in this game so far. We just don't and have once... dead bodies in the game yet. Yeah. <laughs> Can you <laughs> ask just thing keep piling? Uh, Santa Claus looking to take the Ancient, hasn't secured it yet, and loses so many units. The Ancient on a sliver of health, Santa wants to commit, but he might not have the damage here, people. It's oh, not it's dead barely. yet. But hey, if... Why does no, can't move? There it is. Santa Claus oh grabs the my. ancient. 
significant cost, but they have more than enough economy to pull it off. And oh no, don't tell me the game you is good. You have got to be kidding me. I mean, at this point, this would not surprise me, but shit, man. If the game Are crashes at this point, I genuinely hope that it's only a spectator crash. Uh, no, 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 it's not. Ah. Okay, well, considering the position that YJ's out in, and that um, Santa's in, economically speaking. Let's see. Taking taking an honest look, we can look at all the bases here. Yeah. Because it's so, four bases to one, basically. And this one's mine. And, yeah. I, that one's I almost mean, exhausted. Santa yeah, I, has I'm, top top tier tech, and they are they've locked in their opponent. Jeez. Yeah, I, I would say that um, in general, it is very hard to call it. Like th this is basically That's for me true. on the borderline. Um, given the context, though, why Zhao and Santa are talking about it. Uh, I, I would agree with your with your assessment. The odds of Wai Zhao winning there, I mean, they exist, right? Great Hunt was yeah. nearly available, and that technically was the out. Um, but four bases, right? Still, some of them, most of them, actually effectively mining. Uh, Santa did seem to have the winning hand in that play. Mm -hmm. um, it was. It would have been if if Great Hunt could have pulled something out to buy time. Giving Y does out an expansion, that would have been maybe enough. Chat, are you guys alive? What do you guys think about that match? I want to hear your input here. So if there were a leg legitimate hundred percent call, uh yeah, Y just out it, like he, Okay, I'll probably inform Y just out at four bases. I think they might force. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. He's, he's, he's got four. Yeah. I, I kinda wanna see more gameplay, I'm not gonna lie. Which is funny because it's already been over four hours, but yep. in, ter in terms of actually the, the victor of that match was very likely going to be Santa Claus. He had nearly every advantage and the one saving grace uh, from YJ Zhao, even if it could be activated, probably not going to be enough. Was so yeah, everyone agrees yeah. uh, Santa's going to get the win, which means he takes it three to zero. Very impressively done by YJ Zhao, honestly. I mean, today had a ton of bangers. Obviously, we hate to see games, especially, you know, entire matches or tournaments end in that fashion, but super well done by all the players today. We had a lot of entrance compared to, you know, the average tournament, and that's great to see, you guys. It's called Break the mm -hmm. Game. The game was successfully broken, and we had a ton of oh, bangers, boy, by it? the way. <laughs> like, man, we had some bangers. Yeah, final tournament bracket is right here. We had... So, yep. you know what? Well done. Congratulations, Santa Claus, for taking it. Watch is out for second place. Hydraulics, I mean, forfeits aside for third place. And Shadow Murloc for fourth. Well done. Oh, wait. Santa, why does out is saying? I don't know if they're. It's uh, I'm I'm officially yeah. calling it. Like okay, we're calling so, it. Yep. I, I will be very clear here, and this is definitely an awkward situation. The context of the call matters completely seriously. As far as pride is concerned, pride is sure an important thing, but there's nothing mm -hmm. on the line. Santa already had right the two O lead. I see no reason for the game to go yeah. on. There's there's no money right to be had. There's no serious competitive integrity if the game is called here. Uh, in the case of a financially, you know, sponsored tournament, this would be a lot more murky. But yeah. it's a weekly break the game. We're we're playing for fun to test stuff out. We're gonna we're gonna wrap the series there. I will say that it does not take away from the fact that it was close, right? The fact that the entire series is awesome. All the games we've had today. I mean, we're amazing. Shadow Fury, Dominic, thank you so much for, for letting me join you in the cast. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 really fun. It's a total pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, I haven't been able to cast in quite a while, and now I'm here both last week with ZK and now with you. Really, shout-outs not only to our players and viewers, but also, of course, to you, Dominic, ZK, and then Zard, who, who do a lot of production casting for us. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for joining here as well. Thank you to... and also for doing the organization. And of course, thanks to the players for joining. We would not have a tournament okay. without you. And as usual, tournaments are on the Discord. So if mm -hmm. you have game access, there's the Discord. And if you don't, there then you keys pop in different things. I will put one in the YouTube video for this, as I normally do. That's going to be it. So thank you all of you for watching. And have a good night, everyone.